Okay. Uh, we live. Okay. Seems good. Fantastic. All right. Uh, so let's address our massive, massive power consumption uh, from these things to the point where I can't even switch them on and off real quick uh, without tanking our entire accumulator charge. Is it slowing down? Doesn't look like it. I'm not really sure how we connect this for just a second and then the accumulators get drained of 8.3 gigajoules over like 20 seconds and then we dip into uh, 1 gigawatt down here and then it takes a while before this recharges. Um, I'm curious as to... Uh, if we set this a bit higher, I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. So we switch on when we reach 100% charge. Uh, we switch off when it drops below 95. It was literally just on for a second there. It's disconnected. And accumulator charge. Power continues to be consumed by the particle accelerators here. It's rather odd. And it's not that these particle accelerators are active, because if that were the problem... Oh! Well, that little change at least keeps us in the green, apparently. Uh... Why don't we continue adding some solar panels in the meantime? But I fear I will have to set this up so that... Um, maybe we just remove... Well, I could remove the input pipes or something, or, or the inserters for most of these in the short term. Just so we stop using them. Um, yeah, uh, until we get a much more extreme power grid, we're not going to be running this thing at full speed. Alright, we got our solar panels. Fantastic. Let's head over to Solar Panel Central. And while we're waiting for that, let's check on our military spiders. Just a couple of little expansions to roll over. Don't get stuck with the water. A Sigma Bean. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay. Spiders, do your thing. This lot as well. And in an abundance of caution, we'll have them go back to base after this one. Fantastic. Oh, we've arrived. That was easy. Can't really tell the range of 
the spiders as long as those robopods are also active. I guess it stops about here. More solar panels, please. And once we get this to stay in the green, um, which I think we're almost there already, I think another gigawatt or so and the accumulator charge should behave a bit more. Uh, once we do that, we'll spend a few minutes on setting up a solar array up here, which is going to self-replicate. I guess it's handy the um, flat solar panels are actually exactly the same size as a robopod as well. Okay. Oh, that's right. I wanted to research the uh, the new um, substations before we do that. So we're just waiting on our catalogs at this point, which we are producing uh, 2.5k over here, 2.2 over here. So we're about a quarter of the way to getting our first set of um, Energy Science Pack 2 spat out. I think we calculated it would be 50 minutes or so, rounded up to something like an hour. I don't suppose... No, we can't design the substations before we have them. Wait, don't we have, like, one pylon substation lying around up here somewhere? Or, up? Oh. Yes. Wait, construction pylon. No. That's not what I'm looking for. Even though that is cool. I think I might have put it down here somewhere. Which, in hindsight, was a bit of a mistake because... Oh, here it is. Pylon substation. Alright. Blueprint. Uh, I'll just put it here for the moment. And then... Nice! I should have thought of this before. We can actually design where the, su where the pylon substations would fit. It seems like we could have them replace the big power poles. Um, I don't think an upgrade planner is going to let us do that. Sadly. Let's see. There's nothing that Big Power Pole can replace automatically. Um, can swap it out with different types of pylons. Uh, it might be a bit tedious to replace the existing big power poles with uh, substation pylons. Also, they might be a bit expensive. Processing units, batteries, solenoid, plus a pylon. Uh, pylon costs a fair bit. Not enough to not put them everywhere, though. Oh, I thought I just saw red over here. Oh, I did. What is going on there? Particle accelerators turning on and off. It's not this slot, otherwise it would be a... Oh, it is. Hold on. 
Oh, it's actually going back and forth now instead of the accumulator charge getting dragged all the way down. Okay. Uh, so what do we need? 38 gigawatt? We need to multiply what we've already got by 4 in order to uh, run these things at full power all the time. Honestly, that's uh, relatively attainable. I do want to design this with... Um... Wow, that's big. Really, really big. Uh, I do want to design this with the pylon substations in mind. I don't suppose... The RoboPort ones... They'd have to take up some space in here as well. It's just construction area, not... Oh, this is a... The radar construction pylon actually includes some logistic network. Which is a little strange. Anyway, um, let's see. If we fit this here... That doesn't quite line up properly. Uh, what about if we start from the corner? That's perfect. See how far in we can go. Snap to grid relative. Okay. So we got a little bit of room in here. Three by... Th uh, three by eight. And then two by three. We can't fit a RoboPort in there, but can we do... Uh... Construction pylons may, might make a lot of sense. Logistic connection distance 32, construction area 64 by 64. Oh yeah, that makes sense. So this could actually go in the middle. Um, assuming we can make those anytime soon. What does it take to make... Construction pylons. Material Science Pack 2, so that's out of the question. I think we'll just have to have a RoboPort. Oh, we actually need, like... This is too big for a RoboPort to cover. Um, I could just make the blueprint smaller. Or we could put just a bunch of RoboPorts in, kind of temporarily, and remove them later. Does this go where I think it does? Not even close. What was that about? That doesn't look right. I guess we could throw some accumulators in, but they don't really accomplish that much. With the current tech and power demands. I'll call that a less than first draft. 
We seem to be... No, we've got plenty of solar panels. Good. Let's go place some more. And... We might expand this out here. Okay. Um, I kind of do want to stop this massive power spiking. So for now, we're just going to have one column working. That should do it. Terror de Peace. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Alright, how's that making our power look? Just less bad. I guess I could disconnect even more of these. Until we're ready. That was actually a connection. My goodness, they're thirsty. Um... Yeah, how about... How about just these ones? Until we have more power. Alright, that seems to have done the trick. So we're getting a whopping... 52 proton stream per second. Um, I could definitely adjust this so that we'll allow the accumulator charge to drain more before we switch them back off at least. Okay. Now what? Uh, head over this way. And 3.2k, once it hits 8k, we are doing science. Is it my imagination, or does this have sort of a pink glow? I think it's probably just this is a light source, and there's all this purple stuff everywhere. Nice to see all of that operating at full speed, though. Have we run out of scaffolding? It looks like it. Seems like we're keeping up with our power needs for now, since we turned off most of this. Accumulator charge isn't dropping at all. Maybe we could double it and just have it turn on and off. But I'm Expecting maybe when it switches on, this is going to be too much for the accumulators to keep up with. Nope, that's actually enough for now. Alright, we'll stick with that. Back to base. And I wonder what block we should work on while we're waiting for our Energy Science 2. We did start on Astronomic, but we didn't go any further than this. Unless you count all of those shared prerequisites like blank data cards and dealing with junk.
Alright, I think we'll... I think we'll build the self-building solar array. Um, that's right, I was going to make a blueprint which would... Uh, give us what we need to repeat this. Kind of need the uh, big power poles to be placed before we trim it down a bit. Meanwhile, on Navis, this hasn't been built. Where's our construction spiders? I think they're up at the solar panels. Yeah, they're still carrying quite a lot of solar panels. Let's get them to place a few more. Actually, I should be a bit more systematic in where we drop these things off, I suppose. Some of them still have a hundred. Good morning. Mr. Goodnight, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I'll just leave them there for now. Um, I kind of want to make sure the spiders build this thing because the flashing is driving me crazy. Away goes some more iron stream. Down to make more magnetic field data. Slowly approaching 8k. Alright. As well connect these while we're at it. Wait, is that? Yeah, that looks right. Let's go. I do wish the blueprint would include what goes on top of the scaffolding the first time you place it. So you don't have to go for another pass. Also, it seems we need to pick up some more rail. Let's go do that. Probably about time I put something in the rail network that will bring rail to here automatically. Or I could just have it picked up from here. That might make just as much sense. Let's go sort that out first. I need to get the spiders to come up to where the rail is produced anyway. Oh, that's convenient. Okay. Put, uh, signals over here. Wait, that's wrong. This needs to go like that. We did pick up scaffold, yeah, definitely. Otherwise we wouldn't have been able to build this down here. Let's let the bots catch up. Oh, we've left some 
slowly hovering back to us. All aboard. Come on. There you go. And then we've got some more random scaffolding that hasn't been placed yet. It's another good spot to throw in some solar panels, I suppose. Not quite fit three. That's all that we're going to be able to fit. Two tiles. We could move that over two tiles. Okay. So we're going to put a train stop, uh, standard pickup, just one cargo wagon should be fine. Quest stack threshold 40, I mean provide. Spiders over here please. Can you please show me the circle in more detail? It looks interesting. Uh, do you mean the roundabouts? Sure. Uh, this one's not actually complete. We've trimmed it a little bit. Uh, I'll try and find one that's got the least coming off of it. We'll, we'll go and build... Oh, here we are. This is actually a good example. Okay, so the straight rail is all one directional. Um, you can only left hand drive through there. That includes going through the roundabout like this. As long as I don't put a signal on this side, the trains can only go one way. Um, we break that into as many little sectors as makes sense for the trains figuring out where they're allowed to cross relative to each other. Uh, we have a roundabout which has signals on both sides. So the trains are allowed to go both directions on the roundabout, clockwise or counterclockwise. And then we have these crisscrosses which are just to facilitate allowing the trains to get on or off of going counterclockwise on the roundabout as well as clockwise. So once we've done all that, uh, what that allows us to do is have a train stop coming off of the roundabout where the train can just leave, uh, arrive from this direction and leave the way it came. And it will be able to exit in whichever cardinal direction it wants to on the main rail. Uh, it is a lot of... it is a lot of stuff for each intersection, but what it allows us to do is have a very compact uh, train stop. And we can also add... We, we can have train stops coming off in other places as well uh, quite easily. Just add it, add some more signals, and the, uh, the train will be able to do the same thing. A really good example of this is our Omni Smelters. We've effectively got one, two, three, well, with, L with the help of LTN as well, uh, we've effectively got one, two, three, four, five, six drop off stations here, and one, two, three, four, five pickup stations. 
uh, in this block. While also having room to do everything else. Meowning. Sydney Kenson von Ice Tea. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, I'll grab some more rail. So, if I've double checked this right. So, we want a rail chain signal going into any intersection. Anywhere where the train is not allowed to stop in the next sector is where you want a chain signal. And regular signal going this way. And that's actually all it takes. Um, hmm. I kind of want to... We don't have logistic bots here. If, I, if I'm quick, we can probably... Oh, nope, nope, nope. I don't want them to actually take the flat solar panels I'm holding onto here. And I don't want to put that there either. Oh, I should probably disable these um, stack inserters. No! Oh well. There might be some flat solar panels in need of an upgrade up here, or that the bots are going to build now anyway. Um, but yeah, I want to move... If not for these belts here, I would use picker dollies to move these chests all the way over here. Um, can you stop? Stop, stop. I do wish you could turn off Make it so the trash slots are just extra inventory space sometimes. Okay, how much more do we have? Quite a lot. Oh, I know. I'll get the spiders to pick this up. Deconstruction planner... And we're done, actually. What the? No, no, stop, stop, stop. Stop it. Wait, what are, the, what are these bots doing? Oh, they were building scaffolding up here. I thought those were logic box, uh, log logistic bots. Okay. So we're going to put some scaffolding over here. What's the max rate from this thing? Only 10 per second. Uh, so... We can... Just have a stack inserter output this. Like so. Bring the spiders back. Should be all I need them for. Send them back to resupply and fix the inventory. And it doesn't actually matter if this is balanced. to LTM, uh, change the station name, space rail, up oh, there it is, provider, turn this on, substation goes here, I actually do need the spiders to drop off some belt. Uh, and then we'll do space rail 4,000.
All right. I could also make it passive provider chests just in case we want the bot network to use those to build. Oh. Okay. Come to think of it, they'll probably be on their way to build these uh, belts as well. So there's probably no need to send the spiders over here. But uh, yeah, that should trigger a delivery of space rail. There we go. Now we never have to remember to go and pick this up from here. I think that's done. Well, this is on its way. Also, it would help if I actually put some inserters here. Alright, cool. Back to the mall. Uh, get the spiders to keep building this once I'm sure they've got their bots back. Go to lurk. Take care. Good night. Thanks for dropping by. Gosh, you get spiders so late in SpaceX. I thought, I thought I was all good since I got all science done, but turns out you need space sciences. Yes. Uh, I think. Oh, wow, a thousand. Yeah, that's not something you can sort of throw together real quick. Like, cheese it. There are a couple of things, like Space Rail. Um, but at least if you... If, like me, you prefer to make rail blocks to, like, a main bus base, and uh, I don't see why you would want to make, like, a main bus-style base when you have to do all of these... Um, fluids and junk data cards and blank data cards back and forth all over the place. Um, but yeah, a uh, space rail, for example, only costs 50 energy science packs. So I would definitely suggest cheesing that before you build like a proper, um, a, a proper automated system to build uh, energy science. Uh, that is if you want to skip this part of it. And there's a few other things in the research that are really quite cheap. Um, just suggest browsing that before you go to well, definitely before you go to this much trouble. Uh, in hindsight, I definitely would have made the main bus base considerably smaller. Like, even maybe just one machine, or one or two machines of each necessary type smaller. Just enough to get a trickle of tier one science to unlock a few things. Okay, um, did we build this? We're missing something here. We're still missing that belt. Don't tell me there's a bot somewhere on its way with that. It doesn't look like it. We are building these flat solar panels up here where I was supposed to just be designing this part. Um, all right, we're done. Fantastic. Let's bring our spiders down here. It is, uh, there's definitely a learning curve to using rail that goes both ways. Um... And there are risks associated with it, where you'll end up with trains facing each other, stuck, even though they should have a path around each other. 
Uh, but I do recommend experimenting with it to see when and where that happens. I'm never going back to, like, uh, trains with locomotives on just one side. It just saves way too much space and complexity and stuff uh, to do it this way. Alright, power has been steady for a while. Fantastic. Bots are extremely upset with my spiders for some reason. They probably all jumped out here to make uh, scaffolding. We're up to 5.8k on the broad energy. That's the milestone that'll get us those uh, energy science pack twos. Very exciting. Why are these signals wrong? Because this is all one... Oh. Oh. That's interesting. Why isn't it like that on the other side? Um, I think these are too far over this way to let that bit of belt connect, a uh, bit of rail connect like that. Where was it? Over here. Wrong block. Uh, first of all, I'm going to need this, and this. Actually, is that... There's no train going up that way, so that should be fine. In fact, this bit of rail is totally superfluous. Let's get rid of it. Technically, this train could leave going down this way, or a train could go up through here, but uh, I pretty much never see that happening. Um, that is enough space, right? Yeah, that's fine. Is that a bit of rain? Yes. Need to fix that bit as well. Okay, and because there's no actual center, these are slightly on the left or counterclockwise side, which is why that works on this side, but not on this side. I don't like to uh, have to make an exception to the signaling or something with these rail blocks where possible, but... I guess that one's not too extreme. Actually, we could probably just... No, that still has to be there because trains have to be able to go around the roundabout like this. Um, so we'll leave that there. This goes here. And this goes here. Bots are just now catching up with the spiders. Fantastic. Alright, let's get you... to finish this block. So that I can make a proper blueprint of... Uh, a bit of straight rail without the roundabout part. And I think I will actually include the little bits sticking out to the side 
well not sticking out but like like this so I can tell where the roundabouts are supposed to be easily all right have you just about got the scaffolding in place and we put the big poles in now And, of course, some spiders got stuck. Uh, actually, can you fix that one first? Alright. So now... I want... About this much. Actually, I want the scaffolding as well. I'm just gonna grab that, place it somewhere else, and it's so hard to see. Actually, oh, that's gonna be a pain. Can I place all of this? If I place this on Nalvis in order to play around with the blueprint, it's not going to include the scaffolding. If I place it somewhere that doesn't have scaffolding yet, uh, it's not going to include the big power poles. So I guess we're doing this. And this. Can't see anything. Actually, if I just tell them to move to the end of all that, we'll probably get them to build it all. Let's check on Nervous. Uh, military spiders. Your turn. I think we'll focus on the pollution cloud for now. That's where the most spider expansion and attacks and stuff are going to be happening, which means the most, the highest DPS cost. This is just sparse enough that I want to be a tiny bit careful. This part, not so much. Alright, let's send them back after that. They should be able to get rockets over here. And where are our spiders? Looks like they built all the scaffolding. Fantastic. Uh, I didn't actually grab that blueprint. Let's blueprint this. Place it over here. And start picking away at it. I will keep this bit of straight rail going the other way, just so we can see where the roundabout is supposed to go. Why does the... oh no. Uh, seems like we're lacking... Oh, it's the bit across the round... that's fine think. 
Well, maybe I should add some red and green wires for these ones. I was going to say it looked like I'd gotten some uh, circuit wire in this blueprint, which would mean that there are connections missing in various places, so we can't use this massive circuit network. Not that we've needed to at all. Uh, with LTN, so far I really, really haven't had a need for like a global signal carried across all of these wires. And if we really wanted to as well, we could use uh, signal transmitters and receivers. They are a bit power hungry, but not by space standards. Uh, and I was actually going to remove that. This is the part that stays so that we know where the roundabout goes. Okay. Um, I think it's going to be 108 tiles to repeat this. I will include these red and green wires. Substations. I mean, big poles are all here, it looks like. Okay. Here to here. Snap to grid relative, width is 108. Uh, it's not necessarily necessary, but I think we will try to offset that so that this is in the middle. Can't remember how much. Oh, is that it? 45. I think it won't let us do an odd number, actually. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. As long as it repeats correctly. Um, maybe feature block. Alright, let's see if this snaps the way it's supposed to. Continue with the naming convention there. That's looking good. Yeah, that's looking very good. Alright, cool. Let's get rid of this for now. I'm not going to bother getting rid of the scaffolding. Especially since it's dangerous for the spiders. This part should probably be filled out. And now we can... run our blueprint all the way up here. That does make it much easier to line it up with the uh, roundabout as well. Alright. I think I'll go with the spiders this time. Where are they? Over here. Come to me. Is that what I think it is? Oh no, that's cards. You dropped off to make broad energy. We are at 7.4k though. And it looks like... 6.2k? 
Have we already had a delivery for these? No? They should be going at about the same speed. Uh, broad energy is actually 40% faster? I definitely made some kind of mistake here. Rate of consumption is exactly the same. 0 .007, uh, 0 .07 for both broad and energy catalog. Uh, we are making significantly more than that. But still, I thought I ratioed these to go at the same speed. But it's considerably slower. 0 0.1404. How many would this take? Uh, 18, exactly. And we've got 14. So if I add four of these here, then it's going to be a lot more symmetrical and go at the same speed. I remember knowing that this was twice as slow as this, so why did I think it wasn't that we needed twice as many of these? Oh well. It's definitely not a problem. Um... I want to prioritize getting this done first. While we're at it, we'll run this up here. Spiders go here. Oh, there's some more of our sacred trees. Sacred space trees, to be precise. I see some more up here also. I hope there's not going to be space trees hanging around where we want to build our... No! That's where we want to build our solar array. We can't just go clearing magical space trees. That's... that That's way too sinful. Right? What is this? Uh... There's a... There's a crashed rocket full of... glass, I suppose? Really, really, really far? What? I think we found us mysteriously diff disappearing scaffolding. Wow, that's far away. And a nuisance to recover. Well then. So there's like... probably close to 50,000 glass over here. Close to 50,000 scaffolding over here. Good to know. And I wouldn't have found it if I wasn't uh, looking for magical space trees. Well then. Don't know exactly what else I can say about that. So where do we want to do our solar array? We've kind of already got one here, but I don't want to continue the same pattern when we're using uh, pylons. We could do it here. Wouldn't have to travel that far. Seems good. We seem to have run out of scaffolding already. Let's go pick up some... Oh. Or we lost all of our bots. Literally. And they're slowly creeping back to us. Let's go pick some up. I installed LTN today. 
uh, had a massive mental block for about an hour, then an, epiph an epiphany, and it's all good now. Fantastic. Yeah, it's definitely got a learning curve and a couple of quirks, but uh, it does... It is worth it, I would argue. Hey, here we go. Broad Energy Catalog. I believe this is our first time picking it up. And... Regular Energy Catalog is going to take a little bit longer because I didn't fill these quite right. Maybe I should have taken the time a moment ago to drop in these extra computers. Yeah, it really wouldn't take long to fix, would it? Okay, let's do it then. Spiders. Uh, what's the best path here? We can definitely cross that. Back to base. Hey, Mucky. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And don't know if I said Hughes Mike. Good to see you also. Welcome, welcome. Oops. That's the wrong one. Okay. Hello. And follow. How are you doing, Mucky? Streaming today, I'm guessing. All right. No stream for me today. All right then. Relax day, fair enough. Got to have one or two of those, of course. I think I'm. Well, it, it's sort of soon to say because it got broken up by the flooding, but I think I'm liking it a bit better. Uh, streaming for longer and taking two days off. Alright, let's go... Bump up the rate of our... Wait, what? Which one of these had... This is backwards. That's embarrassing. We've been going at like... Not full speed, even with the machines that we have here, because a few inserters were backwards. Well, that that would definitely help as well. And considering taking a second day off as well, yeah. Um, I am not as well off as other people when it comes to how much energy I've got to do things in general, but I was definitely better off um, taking a couple of days as opposed to just one. Alright, I want to drain that so I don't have to pick stuff up off the belt if possible, but the rate of consumption of these is really slow, on the other hand. We'll definitely be putting computers like this. And... This. And this. And that can obviously go just connect here. That is empty enough that we're not going to lose any fluid if we... Disconnect it. Goes there. Alright, this bit's getting emptied. Actually, that will definitely have to be there ish. Just 
just some regular belts. That looks kind of weird, actually. It's fine. Is that going to be consistent? It's not. There we go. That about does it. Now we just update the belts. And the belts. And don't forget this little bit of pipe. Seems all the computers are working. And now we should have exactly the same rate for both of these. 0.14 per second. Oh, was that inserters? Uh, 3.24 per second. There we go. Which is still... It's like double what it, we need to support this, but that's okay. Alright, what's next on the agenda? Whoops. Um, I'm kind of blanking on what I was going to do next. Let's make the spiders build this little thing. And I wanted to build... Even if we have to wait for the pylon substation before I can make the blueprint that I want to self-build. Um, I do want to set up a, uh, a station for dropping off solar panels, pylons, uh, some robopots and accumulators. So that it'll, we can just copy paste to make more solar panels happen instead of having to manually drag spiders up there and stuff like that. It seems our copper is still not looking that great. Oh, wow. So we've actually run out of copper here. Oh, was that a delivery? It is glass. Okay, then. So what's the deal with copper plate down here? It's not flowing. This is suddenly looking a lot worse than I thought. I thought we had a million copper. We've actually got copper ore stored, so that's a really good sign. We do, in fact, have a million copper here. Wait, no we don't. That's the 1.1 million quest. We've got 840k, which is certainly nothing to scoff at. But it is just one station for trains to pick up from as well. Um... Where are you going with this? LDS? Sure. Should I bump up the priority of sending copper into space, perhaps? I don't think having another cargo rocket silo for copper is going to help at this point. Uh, do we actually need more furnaces? I shudder to think of it, to be honest. We've already got so many.
And we have... Oh, wow. We literally had, like, seven trainloads of copper plate available at each of these not that long ago, and they're all gone. I think we actually do need more uh, furnaces. So I'll get the construction spiders. Well, I would prefer to get them to drop off all of their flat solar panels first, but they sort of have to be babysat to make sure they do it. That's why I move them a little bit at a time. Look, this one has a hundred right now. Does it not have bots or something? It does have bots. They're just being very slow about deciding to upgrade the panels. I was going to say it's really not that high of a priority right now, but... Okay, it is the sun going down, that's why. Probably don't have to worry too much about that one. I want to get the construction spiders to build some more omni smelters. I should probably make a couple of... different squads of construction spiders for this exact reason. Yeah, look, they're just doing a few at a time. It's weird. They should have... They should have done this by now. And if I send them home, there's going to be a million bots trailing behind them. Well, we can at least, uh, add the blocks to make the smelters. In fact, I think we can just copy-paste, like, this. That is going to be a pretty big copy-paste. But as long as everything's blue, that shouldn't be a problem. If I want to be a bit cheeky about it, uh, I could probably just extend this robo network down to here to get that done. But no, I think that's going to be a bit messy. Let's just get our spiders to go back. In fact, I think I can just have them move down here directly. There'll be a few straggler bots, so I'm, I'm just not going to worry about it. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, in space... I think we'll do our solar array up here. So we've actually kind of already got the rail up there. Already got plans for scaffolding here as well. Can we improve on this design? Probably. If I offset the uh, pylon slightly, it'll still touch everything. And then we could fit... Well, we could definitely just fill it with accumulators, but more to the point, uh, we could fit the other pylons by construction pylons. And we could swap out those robopods. I think that's the way we'll go. Don't know how many accumulators we should have, but it's really just to fill in 
this space as it is now. Robo ports don't reach far enough for me to just put them in the middle. Is that what I think it is? 7.9 thousand uh, energy catalogs. We are less than a hundred away from getting our energy science too. So of course this would be the exact moment that we've run out of inputs, apparently. It's only the... it's not polarization, radiation, or zappy zap. Uh, electromagnetic field data, of course. It's always electromagnetic field data. Because we also need a copious amount of that to go into the other catalogue. Even though we did make a pretty big block to support that. But uh, that's also bottlenecked on Iron Stream. Which... Copper. Okay. I hate to say it, but that might actually take a while. I think I will bump up the priority to bring copper to space. Even just priority one makes it a higher priority than neutral. That should be all it takes. Maybe I should make sending things to space a higher priority as a matter of course. I'm not sure. Did you really just run out of scaffolding before you got here again? That is not what I'm looking for. Or is it because we've got uh, bots slowly catching up? No, we're definitely out of scaffolding. Okay, I guess I shouldn't have moved them through here. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Back into the giant robot spiders, please. Not that we can easily see that they're spiders at this point. Oh my god. How many bots are just drifting back to us? I think I should have been a bit more careful dropping all of these plans for uh, scaffolding previously. Come on. Good little robots. What's this? Another media. At some point we should probably go pick this up. But it's not exactly doing any harm just sitting there, I suppose. Alright. Back to base, again. Give the other spiders time to catch up. Oh, is that what I think it is? What? Provide stack threshold 160. And somehow... Oh. Wow. We actually literally had exactly uh, enough for one train here, but it wasn't perfectly evenly loaded here. Maybe if I had set the stack size on the fast inserters to one, it would have happened. I'm not sure. 
but we've actually got 2,000, um, 2,000 in these two cargo wagons, and these two are missing two each, and there's four energy catalog uh, sitting in this inserter. And we won't be making any more because the ratio is exactly one to one to one to one to one. We're not making any more energy catalog until we get electromagnetic field data delivered here. That is excruciatingly close. Uh, why don't we pay it a visit? And then I'll get the spiders to go up there while I fix this. Actually, I'll get the spiders to do that right now. Let's avoid the path that um, makes them throw away all of their scaffolding. What? Oh. I see. Good auto mod. I am a bit surprised that the balanced loader ended up with four extra things in this particular chest. I wonder... I, I am curious if setting the stack size to one... It should keep this perfectly balanced. It'll take a while before we get to testing that. But more importantly, we finally got our catalogs here. And we're finally getting our uh, energy catalogs. Uh, sorry, energy insights. We can see if this is all working properly. There goes our 25 degree thermo fluid, looking good. Products finished, 11100. Fantastic. Uh, where are the... Hold on. Did we forget to do the inputs for energy catalogs for these? Uh, energy insights, I believe we did. Should I add a splitter, or... Doesn't really matter. Probably is I don't have two space splitters on me. Don't have any space belt on me either. Uh, shouldn't have sent the spiders up there. Let's do this first. The whole thing's gonna consume everything that the trains brought here before another train comes, anyway. All right. So space rail block. I'm thinking here, perhaps. Except I don't know if we'll have that bit sticking out or not. Over here, please. How do you still not have scaffolding? Wait, are we out of scaffolding? We're actually out of scaffolding here. Oh, no. Uh, maybe collecting that 50,000 scaffolding that's sitting over here might be a good idea. Except look how far away it is. We do have 
29,000 over here. Um, it seems once again we're lacking a space capsule in this place. Where the scaffolding gets loaded. I should probably just set that up to be in the rail network. Um, rocket control unit. Are we requesting those? No. Okay, short term fix. Rocket control unit. Uh, 160? I mean, 1600? That reminds me, we wanted to get our construction spiders to build all of this. There's quite a lot missing. I don't think I have them carrying crafting combinators. Uh, other than that, they need more belt. Let's get this one to request... 50 crafting combinators. And I think each block needs more than 50. No, it actually needs 36. So each trip we can drop off more than the crafting combinators required for one block. Should be fine. Cloud go brew. I think I would rather get this one finished first, though. Let's send them back to the mall. I guess we may as well bring our spiders back to us. Since we need some splitters placed here. If I put these one tile further to the side, we could have... Nah. Oh, where am I even going to put the inserter? to pick up energy insight from this one. Probably should have thought of that. Uh, I think I have a solution. It's a little bit... odd. But that's fine, I suppose. was this trying to pick up? Wait, what? Why are the fast inserters pointing at these pipes? That just looks weird. How fast is this? Uh, very, very slow. Like 2.16 per second. That's fine. I guess this would look most even. And splitter goes here as well. This is looking a bit spaghetti. Not thrilled by that, but it works. Now we just need the spiders to arrive to actually drop the... How are you stuck? Oh, I think I just added orders where they couldn't reach. Okay. And down here. We are getting tier 1 space uh, energy signs. Oh, and there's our tier 2. Fantastic. I don't know if this is fully automated. Oh, it is. It's just not full speed. Cool. And actually, this thing won't get 
enough energy insights consistently either. This actually needs to be a stack inserter. Probably the same applies to Holmium Cable. Or it would. Fantastic. Alright, let's check on... Uru? Oh. Hey, that's our scaffolding. Or it will be. It's gonna take like 15 minutes to load. Uh, meanwhile, let's beef up our smelting capacity. Step one is to get all of these crafting combinators placed. Hopefully we won't have to do the trick to rotate them all around uh, to fix that bug that happens sometimes. So we're now looking at 12 plus 6, uh, 18 times 36. Uh, 648 industrial smelters dedicated to the basics. That's kind of a lot. Or it, you would think it is, but... Two-thirds of that was enough... Was slow enough to run out of copper plate, evidently. Here come our spiders. And our other spiders. Looks like this one's working. How do we still not have blue belt? Oh, we're not making blue belt here. Whoops. Uh, let's just build what we can on this trip. And then we'll send them back up here with the belts. On second thought, I could always request blue belts be delivered here. That might be good. Belt. Uh, let's say... 4,000. 2,000. And... 2,000. We should see one of those getting delivered here fairly soon, I think. Uh, there should be plenty of blue belt. Oh, we are actually producing space belt in the rail network as well, although this might be a little bit slow. So I can probably arrange for a rocket to send those up here automatically. I mean, I can definitely do that. It might just be a bit slow overall, but it's probably more than enough. Uh, but yeah, here's our blue belt, and here probably is, um, several short trains delivering things other than blue belt. Let's give it a minute. All right, that's what I like to see. We've finally got, we don't have any like priority. This is a one-to-one -one ratio and we're spitting out, this is a perfect ratio, except that we're also spitting out the um, energy science packs over here. So unless I get rid of this, we won't see these going full speed. But uh, that's fine. How many do we have already? 84. That's good. We need 100 to get this done. Plus 200, plus 200, so 500. 1,000 to get 
all of this. And just 300 to get the pylon substation. Fantastic. Also, our programmable speaker is telling us that we've got um, energy science pack 2s, but unfortunately, I don't think I can disentangle the biters are attacking sound uh, in the sound options. That's why I have alerts off. Alright, so we'll wait till that reaches... Was it 300 or 200? 300. Actually, it might be a little bit slow. Why don't we just grab some of these right now? And head on over to drop those off. I'll actually leave the spiders here to pick up the scaffolding as soon as it's sent. Just triple check this is set to Nervous Orbit Mole. Launch on cargo full. Fantastic. And there goes another media. How's our power looking? Very, very good. Assuming we're not trying to run particle accelerators. We are running 31 of them at the moment, apparently. That's not... That doesn't sound right. These 12 are switched off. I don't even know where else we would have... 21 particle accelerators. 31, rather. Oh, is that actually just the minimum consumption? 3.5 gigawatts, and there's 31. Yeah. I think almost all of that is literally just minimum consumption particle accelerators. Sorry, 3.33 megawatts times 31. Now that should only be like... Uh, 103 megawatts. So where is this 3.5 gigawatt coming from? And this is over the last five seconds. I don't understand where this could be happening. It seems very odd. Alright, let's go deliver some science. And find out if whether or not it's a bit premature. See how see how quickly this goes. Here is our science. Fantastic. And we're already at 5%. That was definitely... Could have waited until we had 300. Okay. Use a bit more jetpack. So we really need this scaffolding. It is... Uh... Well, it's about a quarter full. What about on Nervous? Where's our spiders? That's right, I put them up here. No, I didn't. Did we bring the belt over here? Hey, Whiskers. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Did we, or did we not get belt delivered? It doesn't look like it. Although, I can't see the whole logistic network here. How can I tell which logistic network this is? Hmm. 
no idea. Busy afternoon playing with trains. Nice. Playing with trains is always fun. If we see a cloud of bots delivering blue belt to these spiders... Oh wow, that was kind of quick. Even though I already knew that. Uh, then we're going to know that blue belt was delivered here. I just want to double check the signal. Yeah, we're definitely requesting... Oh, the request stack threshold is 160. That's why. Okay, let's um, multiply this by 4. Even though we just want a short train to bring a few. That should be all it takes to get some belt delivered here. Give it a few seconds and we should see this light go yellow. When you're ready. Anytime. Hold up. 16k, 8k, 8k. I don't think we've got that much here. So we're either going to have to like purple chest these and limit these accordingly. That might not be the worst idea actually. Um, I was going to say I should just uh, change the... Oh, never mind. It's actually this train that's picking up uh, undergrounds. Fantastic. I thought the network up here was going to have to have four chests full. Well, four cargo wagons full before it would trigger any deliveries. But, no, this is fine, actually. Alright, so we know that's going to get uh, belts and stuff delivered to these spiders. Um, it would probably still be quicker if we just send the spiders up here for now. But in future, we can get them to pick up belts from here, which is... Obviously an improvement. How much tier 2 science do we have here? 416. That was quicker than I expected. Let's pick up the rest. And we'll have everything we want to research here except for wide area beacons. Once we've got the pylon substations, we can start building these out. Once we've got the scaffolding, we can start up here as well. Uh, with the... Uh, Self-building solar panels. I think we'll just... Do it like this. Probably. Whoops. All right. Let's grab our science. And I think I'll turn this over here since we're going to have enough for everything but the wide area beacons for now. Where are we going with these spiders? We need the scaffolding, but I was going to go up here to deliver the science. 
Scaffolding is only half full. Thank you for the follow, Clued. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Spiders don't move slower on the scaffolding than other surfaces, do they? I'm pretty sure they move at full speed across everything. Except water, obviously. Uh, I think I'll just fly over to drop off the science. It's actually faster if I equip more jetpacks. I don't need this many life support things either, since we're manufacturing those in space now. I mean, I probably never needed that many, but still. Whoops. Even distribution. Go. Fantastic. How do we actually make the pylon substation? We need hol holmium solenoid pylon and those two things and pylons themselves are aeroframe pole holmium cable concrete and beryllium plate i'm guessing the solenoids will want to make on the ground uh, because they can benefit from productivity modules let's get our spiders back down here Actually, we need them to finish this block first. Uh, the lights are not important. The belts very much are. That should probably do it. So we need Holmium Cable and Holmium Plate mashed together. It doesn't say what we can build it in. Um, seems we can handcraft it. If we can make it in an assembler, a space assembler machine, I'm guessing we can make it in a regular one. Portable RTG2, very exciting. Uh, for that, we just need to add even more of what already goes into an RTG solenoids, and radiation, and atomic data. Overclock, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Don't need to carry 400 flat solar panels all the time. Should probably turn this on. And Holmium. I could probably squeeze in production for the solenoids right here, to be honest. The only question is how elegantly we can fit a train stop to pick them up. Uh, maybe that wouldn't be as bad. I don't love that at all. But on the other hand, especially if we end up copying this block again, it would be good if all of those uh, Holmium products were made together. I could always add a loader on this side for the solenoids. We'd have to make a precise loader, but that's fine. I think that is probably the way to go here. Max rate of ingots is 5.376. Uh, this can consume 4.5. We could probably bump that up a little bit. And we're getting 
23 holmium plate per second. This consumes 18 to s less than 18 to saturate this belt. Uh, those should probably be fast inserters. I mean, stack inserters. Yes, they should. Let's, uh, correct that. This is fine. So how many of these... Let's just add a block like this. Grab our construction spiders. Who have run out of belt yet again. Already. There should be some belt over here now though, I hope. I see 2.8k blue belt. And the other two are probably here as well. Bots are leaving a trail. Wait a sec, did they just do the weird... Maybe they have enough belt to finish this. Yeah, I think I just saw like eight express belt uh, on one of them. So they were just doing the weird bots not reacting to things thing. Seems like this block is finished then. Fantastic. Back to the mall. Hey, Engie. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. T-Hack's not checking chat often. I check chat sometimes, often. It is quite interesting how empty your chat is. Yeah, it's been a slow day for chat. Especially for 56. Oh, it happens sometimes. Uh, it's not like I've collected data on this, but I want to say people tend to get a lot chattier towards the end of the stream. Usually. Uh, we still don't have the scaffolding. Um, we need 80 more stacks before this will launch automatically. That's fine. How you doing, Engie? Okay, I wanted to figure out... I'm going to take a momentary break from... ...building these out. We've got two of them completely functional now, I think. And most importantly, spitting out more copper. That reminds me. We still haven't... I, I imagine we still haven't launched another... Uh, rocket full of copper plate. Judging by these empty belts. We've really been consuming an obscene amount of copper up here. Okay-ish, trying to force Factorio to do what I want. Fair enough. What are you working on now? And how am I going to get... We are slowly draining our reserves of copper plate, but... We do just have the one block storing it, so... At this point in the game, the rate that trains can pick up from here is sort of... Um, relatively slow compared to the demand for the copper plate. Uh, the fact that we've got this copper shortage while we are, I think, accumulating copper ore in storage uh, suggests to me that we really need more furnaces. What do you want from Factorio? Hmm... 
sounds all philosophical, doesn't it? Let's do some solenoids. And get a feel for how fast that's going to be. Only 2.67 per second. It's hardly anything. Let's see if we can fit. I, I wonder how rapidly we're going to need solenoids overall. Solenoids go into 13 things. Substations, RTGs, energy shields, high temperature turbine generators, dynamic emitter. Watch this space. That might become a high, th high volume thing. Uh, energy science pack 3. Okay, so we are going to need solenoids at 10 makes 6. So maybe not that many, but even so. Uh, construction pylon, space probe rocket. Only needs 30. Spaceship ion booster tank. Ion engine. Star probe. Light data from a star and return star probe data must be launched from a space probe rocket silo that's in close orbit of a star. Cool. Supercharger. Okay. We might need solenoids at a higher throughput at some point. But... For our purposes for now, I think two or three of these are going to be just fine. Um, so, where are we going to fit it, though? Are we going to fit it into this block? I think we'll do this. And could fit a couple of these like so, maybe. Except move the substations, split that there. How do you get so much ore so late on Nalvis? Do you have any resource left on the planet? Um, we've actually got quite a lot of resources left on Nalvis. Um, we just, for the most part, we just tap actual mines when we need more. And we've got a lot going on with core mining. Um, but at this point, it's actually uh, a smelter bottleneck um, that we need to sort out. I think these can just be fast inserters, even yellow inserters would probably be fine. Oh, we definitely need to move that substation. How are you powering these miners? Uh, mostly with a lot of solar panels. We do have some nuclear plants, though. Uh, and we've got a lot of core mining supporting... Uh, from uranium core fragments, supporting all of our nuclear needs as well. Lotharian and Doga. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, where are we going? Let's see. We need a substation over here also. And underground belt goes this way. 
Actually, I don't want it here because that's where the circuitry is going to have to go. We're going to remove all of these. And we're going to need some stack filter inserters. That's going to have to move over a bit more. Oh, that's also wrong. Can you place pylons on the planets? Uh, well, you will be able to, but we're just, we literally just unlocked pylons. So we haven't set up the manufacturing for them just yet. Uh, this is going to have to be Holmium Cables specifically. And Holmium Cable less than or equal to zero. Alright, remove that. Copy this over here. Okay. This will obviously be um, solenoids instead. Solenoid. Whoops. I tried to shift right click, shift left click to copy the signal there. Alright. And this is solenoid as well. Copy that across all of the blue inserters. Now we connect these chests. And the train stop is going to need some slightly clever circuitry in order to make sure the inserters don't stick out with uh, the quote-unquote wrong resource when we're done here. We're going to set filters so we know what we're trying to load into the train. Set stack size S. Copy that across all of the inserters. Same thing on this side. And for one, car uh, one inserter per cargo wagon we're going to connect a green wire as well. This thing here is going to remove some unwanted signals that we get from the logistic train stop output. So we're just going to say each greater than zero, pass through each input count, and then we've got minus a million for everything we don't want on a constant combinator. Then we need two arithmetic and one decider combinator. The arithmetic combinators are going to divide by 24, which is the number of chests. Uh, hello, spiders. Whenever you're ready. There we go. Oh, I almost forgot. Uh, we need to subtract what's actually in the train from this thing, which is going to tell us what the train is asking for. So we're going to say each times negative one, output each, bring these two together, which is implicitly going to do addition and subtraction. So what we've got on this green wire right here is just the number and type of items remaining to be put into the train. Divide that by 24 chests. Output each, which is a generic thing that's going to give us the signal type. Um, and this is going to give us S for stack size as well, which is the same number. That goes to our red wire, which connects to all of these. 
and now green wire. One of these are going to have to be connected. Let's do that. Uh, our green wire is not going to have an S signal because if you don't include the control signal for stack size, it defaults to one and that's going to be fine. And this is just going to kick in as soon as these ones don't. So there's no rem there's no uh, decimal places when you do division in Factorio. It's going to do uh, just... If you want the remainder, you use this ampersand signal. It's called modulus. But once this divided by 24 is just a remainder, that's going to spit out nothing. So we're going to go each less than 24, output each. Doesn't matter if we do input count or one here, the point is it's going to pass through the signal for, for example, Holmium cable, for the filters to just one uh, stack inserter for each cargo wagon. And when we get down to that last uh, stack inserter, or last four stack inserters, it's going to be a stack size of one. And that's how we avoid uh, having the inserters stick out after we're done. One last thing, we want to... I'm pretty sure 168 stacks is sufficient for this. I'll bump it up a bit more than that. But because the the one inserter per cargo wagon puts in a little bit more than the others, uh, we want to make sure there's a bit extra waiting in the chests before the train comes to pick these up. Uh, and we definitely have to have a strict uh, balanced loader here as well. There you go, found a solution. Belts are awesome. What I really wonder is that the heat manager takes much longer than the fluid manager to calculate should use the same equations. Really? Heat gets, heat gets calculated like a fluid. I guess that makes sense. Never look to the actual code. Okay. Love to lurk your stream. Thank you. Mm, nuclear. Indeed. Self-powering. Wait, what's self-powering? Uh, the core miners are actually on a power switch. Or, if you don't want to use a power switch, considering they have a minimum consumption of zero, you can just block the belts. Uh, but yeah, um, we've actually got some power switches so that the core miners won't consume all of our power. If this drops below... 95% on the accumulator, the core miners are going to switch off, and they're not going to switch on again until we're at full power. Fluid in a pipe is a 1D problem, heat is at least a 2D problem. Love this idea, thank you. Heat flow is nothing else than a moving fluid. The force to move is equal to a certain potential. Same thing as electricity. Isn't electricity flowing like fluid? Like a... Well, not like fluid exactly, but it's like a lies to children explanation. Um, I mean, it works. I'll use this to save my base from blackouts. Nice. Yeah, when it comes to miners, um, the minimum minimum power consumption for those is always zero. So, uh, for example, let's see, Hagen. No, oh, Hagen's a bad example. We've just got the one core miner pointed straight at this uh, delivery cannon. Uh, Taser. I don't actually have any power management on Taser. We're running it off nuclear power. Um, 
Maybe we've got what we need in the Robo Network to demonstrate this right now, actually. I see bot movement. Fantastic. Okay, so all you have to do, because this has a minimum consumption of zero, you don't actually need power switches for something like this. Uh, the default signal to read an accumulator is A, and we're just going to say A has to be, uh, let's say, greater than 90. So as soon as the accumulator charge drops low enough, this would stop. It is an inaccurate explanation, yeah. Um, I've heard... I can't remember what the example was, but certain, like, lies to children explanations of how things work in physics, for example. Some people go on to, like, think that that's how things really work, even though they're really quite, you know, well-educated and stuff. Uh, and it's, it's a whole thing. Alright, uh, I almost forgot to finish this build right here. I think it might actually already be finished. I'll change the name of this to say that we can also collect solenoids from here. We also need a destination for our solenoids. I'm not seeing... What's the max rate here? 16.2 holmium cable per second. That's less than half a belt. So why is holmium cable not reaching the end of this belt if this part's saturated? It's not a lane balancing issue because both sides of this lane can contribute to this. Twenty-two point five per. S oh, that's inserters. There we go. Holy crap! Okay, we need a li a little bit more volumium cable to support this. Um. Whew. All right, seventy-two per second. That is more than we can produce here. Um. 36 per second is more than half a belt. Uh, this is so awkward. I kind of wish I'd had access to all of the ratios and stuff when I was designing this in the first place. Shouldn't we be getting... No, hmm. yeah, no, it does have to bottleneck onto a half belt. Can we get these to... I don't think we have enough room to do this. We need an underground... Like that. If we want a full belt of each to be able to go up here. Uh, we could probably pull that off. Strain the belt first so we have a little bit less stuff all over the place. I guess the plate has to go somewhere. Actually, if I just move this over... I can't quite just move it over a tile. 
if I connect that down now. I don't like this having to pick up from a corner. Normally I wouldn't put this like so, but... This one has to pick up stuff a lot faster than this does. And these should probably be stack inserters as well. I don't think we're gonna we're not we're definitely not gonna be able to support all of these machines with this. But it's definitely gonna be an improvement. There we go. Now we're only bottlenecked up by 45 solenoids per s uh, 45 cable per second. Which will actually use exactly this much. So why don't we delete these? Actually, how much output is this? Only 14.5. 8.5 per second, so it doesn't matter with the belt sides. Exactly 45 holmium cable per second. Alright, I can live with that for now. Obviously we could do a bigger redesign to get better capacity and ratios with all of these, but... From what I've seen flicking through FNEI, 14.85 solenoids per second is going to be more than enough for our short-term needs. Now we need a rocket. This one's taken. I would have liked to keep the holmium stuff together. Yeah, we've got Holmium Plate here, Holmium Cable here, and Holmium Solenoid. Was this copper? I need to add that to the map thing. I think I've messed up where these all line up. Yeah, that... I think I'll move these up a bit. So that is sulfur. Goes here. Cryonite rod. Goes here. Copper plate. It's a little bit cramped. And this one's going to be um, solenoids. And it's going to take a minute before we fill this up. Alright, which uh, station? This one? Solenoid. We need this to Solenoid Requester. Why is this requesting rough data? storage substrates. At least I have it switched off. Uh, what does solenoid stack to, actually? Also, I should add this to the mini-map over here, I think. Makes it a bit clearer. 50. So, 25,000 in a rocket. 25,000. On trains only. Double check one more time. This goes to here. And I can't set up the target just yet. But that should be fine. Is it because you can enter the rockets? 
if I see correct up left corner, it's Helmod's mod. This gives ratio. Uh, this one? That, sorry, wait, that's module inserter. Uh, factory planner, Helmod, there we go. Indeed. Argy Jim, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, but yeah, it's not just that, it's like much harder to design these things in advance if you haven't gone through uh how can i put this for example building a block that does blank data cards my initial idea was okay we've got uh contaminated cosmic water and scrap as our undesired outputs from here so we'll just put them down here and then we kind of ended up with a bit of space here which is more than enough but like after i built this block to deal with contaminated scrap um i found oh or i was reminded um dealing with contaminated cosmic water 99 percent of it comes back as regular cosmic water so it would make a lot more sense to just process that right here, send it straight back into this one, and we'll pick up contaminated bio sludge from this block. Uh, is considerably easier and less, it's less for the trains to do as well. It's one thing to try flicking through and looking at all of the amounts of stuff that these things all produce and trying to plan it out before you've ever made one iteration. Um, but it's never going to be as good as after you make a quote-unquote mistake or two. While we're doing some things I'm nervous, let's drop this off. It helps a lot when you go to build one space science from start. Oh, absolutely. It definitely did. Ian Nua, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. What are the red triangles? Uh, yeah, those are for getting in the rockets. Um, I think someone mentioned an update changed the way that looks on the map. But, but it's basically like some vehicle entrance points is how the mod is making that work. Experience looks like that's the big attraction to this mod. Lots of discovery. Oh, definitely. I mean, there is a lot to this mod that's uh, worth checking out for various reasons. All right, we've got 7.5k solenoids here, so it won't be long now before we can uh, check to see if our loader is working. I've built this thing so many times now, I'm actually pretty confident it's going to work. Seven point seven K. If one couldn't fail, it would be boring. Yeah, kind of. 7.8k. And how much, how fast are we making these? 14.8 uh, per second, so... Oh, by the time I calculated that, we should have 8,000. There we go. Another few seconds, that light should go yellow, unless I messed up setting the request. For the holmium uh, solenoids over here. Meanwhile, on Navis Orbit, we do have a couple of blocks here available still. Let's use this one, because why not? Not going to worry too much about the precise uh, pathing the trains have to take. 
set this filter to blacklist. That goes to our trash train. Everything that isn't solenoid. And if there's a crash, the construction bro construction bots will bring solenoids here. Uh, we're going to name this Nervous Orbit. All me young solenoid. I think that's right. Name the station solenoid provider. Everything else is already set up. Now we can go back to our rocket silos. Set this to Alvis Orbit Holmium Solenoid. Launch on cargo full. And theoretically, that should be the last thing we need to do before we get solenoids sent up here. How many? I, I should have actually checked before. Yeah, okay, this is getting filled up. It's just taking a while. But yeah, I did bump up the priority. Oh. Um, I bumped up the priority on the other copper plate rocket launcher, I think. Uh, this one? Yeah, I did. Okay. Make this one a high priority as well. Some of those resources will get split between the two of them, but... Uh, 42k means one more delivery here, and we'll get some copper sent back to orbit. Okay. Um, the fact that we've been filling up two cargo rockets in this time means it's not as slow as we thought. But yeah, I'm not sure why we're not seeing a delivery for... Holmium solenoids just yet, though. Request stack threshold 25k. Solenoid. Long trains only. Uh, probably. I was gonna say probably because we didn't connect the wires, but it looks like we did. Oh, that's right. It's because of the provide threshold. A train load is 160 stacks, but we set this to 10k, which might be a little bit excessive, but it's really important that because we can't check what's in an individual cargo wagon, if we are trying to precisely load multiple cargo wagons at the same time, uh, the only way to do it is make sure they're completely in sync. And what it took a while to figure out is that when these things break, if we've set them up correctly otherwise, the reason is uh, one of the inserters didn't have quite enough to keep swinging all the way. So now we've got our 10k, we should see a train coming to pick this up very soon. Very, very soon. Any second now. This is connected, right? Certainly looks like it. Provide stack threshold 200. 10,000 solid. There it goes. Fantastic. Maybe I should make another depot closer to these blocks over here. Here would be good for another depot. In any case, if we look at this uh, combinator right here, you can see the stack size decreasing. 
that's the number of items that remain to be put in by each uh, stack inserter. I'm not sure why it ends in three. Never mind. That's fine. And as you can see, once it drops below... Um, once it drops low enough, that signal disappears, and it's only the remaining one inserter per cargo wagon that's swinging with a stack size of one. And if you have it swinging with a stack size of one, uh, what happened here? Uh, in that case, it's never going to end up sticking out after the train arrives. So now we're going to have uh, solenoids. And we should be able to make some pylons. Well, we could have made regular pylons here already. I should probably add that to our list. Why are we trying to make repair packs? Because we've run out of stone. Probably because we never asked for stone. Okay. Stone. 2000. Um, more importantly, I forgot I switched a bunch of these off. Whoops. There's probably actually quite a lot of things we want to be crafting right now. But before we do that, I would like to get pylons set up. So I'll connect that like so. Pylon comes first. And that requires aeroframe poles. I think we've got those in the rail network. Probably didn't request them here yet. So we'll do that as well. What do they stack to? 50. Okay. And then... Everything else we've already got here. I don't remember asking for barrel plate, but we do have it. So that's going to be regular pylons, and then... And then we're going to try for pylon substations. Fantastic. There should already be a train delivering aeroframe poles and or... Well, the Holmium cable uh, solenoids haven't arrived yet, actually. But they should be here... Actually, it might take a little while. We need 25,000 to trigger a launch. So that's two and a bit more train deliveries of solenoids. Also, we seem to be... Oh. We must have picked up Holmium Plate as well. Should I prioritize the solenoids? Or I could just send a rocket up early. 8,000 is actually quite a bit. On the other hand, we've got, like, at least six train loads of Holmium plate stored here. So let's prioritize the uh, dependent items first. Also, something I didn't consider... This uses 18 Holmium plate per second, this is 11.25, so this actually can't keep up. Whoops. 4.5 ingots per second, 5.3.
5.344 if we did 19. Five point three seven. Wait, what? Five point three seven versus five point three four four. We could add three machines here. Um, we need a substation. construction spiders. I think I sent them down here. Yep. They might be a bit short on belt or something, so I'll send them back this way first. Everything else seems to be working here. Actually, we're missing a few. Why are there crafting combinators missing from the copy-paste here? Is it the same here? No? Alright. Probably there was something in the way previously. Let's try this again. And that did not add the crafting combinator ghosts. Let's have a look up here again. They are missing. Okay. What about up here? That one's fine. Let's try copying this. And that's going to go here and here. And then we get our spiders to pay them a visit. What happened here? What? 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 Why? Why were all of these items on the ground just now? Does anyone have any idea? What? I feel like I caught my bots doing something indecent. Sorry, dropped it? What? Okay. Bot explosion? No, that would have had to be like a hundred bots exploding at the same time. That was very weird. Alright, let's get our construction spiders to fix this weirdness. And then hopefully we can finally get them back up here where I want them. Invisible spitter. Maybe. I hope not because um, we had a bunch of crashes a while ago when spiders destroyed a bunch of stuff that included crafting combinators, and we had to very carefully manually remove them. Not use a deconstruction planner. Speaking of which, we should get our deconstruction gang to finish clearing this out. Oh. And let's drop in some more Energy Science Pack 2. Wide Area Beacon, here we go. So that needs a bunch of stuff we have, actually. Oh, just need to make beacons on the spot and get a few energy catalogs delivered to the mall. And we'll be able to have uh, wide area beacons. 
Nice. Oh, also, I think we got our scaffolding. I just saw the bots uh, placing it. So, while we're here, we could maybe make a start on that giant solar array that's going to self-expand. But you can select items on ground for a planner like that. Uh, yeah, the items on the ground were already marked for deconstruction, which is what happens if they drop within the bot network. Um... Sepulsnia, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. The drop-off station for Space Mall has uh, had a train stuck with destination full for a while. That is the vanilla trash train. Um, and the reason it does that is because, for reasons, uh, it's better with vanilla train stops to set the... To keep them enabled, technically, but set the train limit to zero. Uh, otherwise, if the... When the condition chains changes from enabled to disabled, you get trains getting st just stopping instantaneously in the rail network all over the place. Uh, so one thing that I kind of racked my brain trying to figure out how to do with LTN... And then I suddenly realized, oh, it's much simpler if you just use a vanilla train for this. Is no matter what is dropped into this chest, I just want it brought back to the mall. Um, so all we have to do there is... Uh, if there's anything in the chest, output signal L for train limit, and a... Trash pickup, trash drop off train will run its circuit and bring stuff back here to this robo network. Okay, cool. So, all according to plan? Yeah. I, I do wish there was a better way um, than having it spam destination full all the time. It looks a bit bad uh, when you've got like seven trains spamming destination full at this mall as well. Um, so, let's get our spiders up here to finish this little tweak. I'll just do one extra machine rather than bottleneck on the uh, We'll bottleneck on the ingots rather than the machines, partly just so that we've got some symmetry here. Okay. I don't know how I could go much bigger for making ingots. I, I, like, I would like to make nothing but ingots in a block like this, but just the, with the size of the machines and the ratios and stuff... Uh, it doesn't work out so well. Do the last two need inserters? Indeed they do. That should all be done without me looking again. Um, okay, so this is where we want to start our... Our big solar... Um, I think I'll set it up so we can have long or short trains here, since we will want a lot of solar panels delivered. Train stop. Oh, we need a signal over here. This is one case where a chain signal would work the same as a rail signal, but because it's going into a dead end. But it's generally best practice not to do that. Um, I guess we'll do purple chests. 
overall throughput is not going to need to be that high, so we'll just do one. Um, per cargo wagon. Add some roboports. If I can figure out how they should fit together. Let's see. Standard drop off. And I'll just call this. I'm just going to call this like, solar array. Request stack threshold. Uh, make it like one, honestly. Some things we might want small volumes brought in. And we're going to need uh, everything in here. Pylon substation. Pylon substation. Say, I'm guessing these will stack to 50. Let's see. Debug mode. Uh, pylon substation stack size 50. Cool. Uh, flat solar panel. Tier 2. Uh, let's see, this is 248, so let's say 500. How much fits in a cargo wagon, I wonder? Uh, 20 times 40, 800, 3200 for a long train. Okay. Oh, we've already got a delivery. Uh, I wasn't ready for that. Whoops. Well, we're gonna finish this build now. Does the orbit have a night phase, or do the solar panels always produce? They always produce. Yeah, we're apparently in, uh... We're, we're either in, like, a polar orbit, or... We're orbiting so high that the amount of time it gets blotted out by the planet, uh, the sun gets blotted out by the planet, must be trivial. Um, so I'll put this here and here. Big power pole. We're missing our big power poles that should be here because scaffolding. Do we have power? We do not. We still do not. Oh. They're missing all the way down there. Okay then. We just line this up. Still kind of tricky. There we go. I'll just make myself drift down here, and we should automatically drop off those big power poles. Um, we're going to need to ask the logistic network what we've got. We're going to read logistic network contents and also available construction bots as construction bots. Fortunately, Read Logistic Network Contents also includes the, um, uh, what am I trying to say? Repair packs. Not that they should be needed, but on the other hand, 
we had some rockets that missed somehow come all the way over here, so I think it's a, a good idea to have this network able to repair itself. I was going to say it seems like we've finished, but there's actually some power poles missing here as well. Let's drop those off. If I just line this up carefully first. Wait, where's my self? Away we go. Fantastic. Okay. So, uh, in LTN settings, I have the default provide threshold as a million. So, LTN isn't going to think that we've got stuff available for pickup here. Uh, we're going to request a couple of stacks of each of these, lots of solar panels, some accumulators. Uh, repair packs, because why not? And... Oh, we need scaffolding. Uh, why don't we just make it a train load? 16k. And we're going to need some storage. Don't know if this is plenty or if it's excessive. Uh, that should fit the scaffolding by itself. Yeah, no, this should be way more than enough. Alright. And last but not least, uh, we do actually need power. That should just about do it. Um, I did forget the minor detail of... Oh, logistic bots as well. And we could probably... Stand to put things in the robo parts. Oh, and also construction parts. Okay. 50 logistic parts, 50 construction parts. Uh, we'll use the total logistic parts for this one. We're not going to. We're not going to need much in terms of logistic bots, and... Well, actually, we arguably probably don't need any logistic bots. Probably all of this could fit into four storage chests. But... This is fine. Here come our... Bots now. Fantastic. really love this being able to have uh, logistic networks and LTN trade items. Oh, it's even filling up three stacks here and then the rest is going to be scaffolding in this cargo wagon. That's kind of efficient. Right, I think we've actually set this up entirely. Um, do we want to make any improvements to, well, there's definitely one improvement we're going to make to this, which is to have, um, 
construction pylon in here. But we can't do that just yet. We'll just do it like that for now. And we'll blueprint like so. Include the tiles. I'll just put pylon up pylon uh, flex solar panel. And that's going to go here. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, we're never going to have to come back here ourselves. All we have to do is spam blueprints and this will get built. So the accumulators in there just for an electricity buffer, are you monitoring slash alerting for that anywhere? We are using accumulators in a couple of places for, I think it's literally just one place at the moment, just to check, turn off this power switch if the accumulator drops below. Uh, it's actually only 20% at the moment because I'm made it so that we're only using a few of these at a time because I massively overconsumed on power with the particle accelerators. So think of most of this as just having room for expansion. Um, we've got eight of these particle accelerators that are actually connected. Um, but the idea was connect all of these, uh, connect this to an accumulator. If the accumulator charge drops below like 95% or something, we turn the power switch off and then we only turn it back on once the accumulator is full. Uh, that way we know we're not crippling our power network with this. But... Oh, train's coming. Uh, but what actually happened is these things are so power hungry and the accumulators do have a finite speed at which they can input or output charge and we don't have that many of them um, that the moment all of these switched on it would actually drain the entire accumulator charge over like I don't know, how long does it take to Drain an accumulator. Five megajoules, max output 500 kilowatts, half a mega, half a megawatt, so like 20 seconds. That's actually what I was going to guess. So like, these would switch on, this would drain over 20 seconds, and then we'd still have the... I don't know if it like... It definitely doesn't do an entire recipe and takes all of the power for that, but there is some lack of granularity, like where there's there's a minimum amount of power that these things can can take from the power network when they're switched on for even a moment. Oh yeah, 10 seconds. I don't know why I was thinking 20. Okay, let's bring our spiders back to base. Actually down here. And how's this going? I'm seeing predictable phaser, I mean deliveries. That's our delivery from earlier actually. And I should have set this up before. Um, we literally only need one logistic bot put into the robo network in order for everything else to sort itself out. So this is all it takes to have like a self um, a self activating bot network from the rail. 
Alright, do we have any substations yet? I wouldn't think so. Something has probably come up. No solenoids, that definitely doesn't help. We do have pylons, at least one anyway. Apparently beryllium plate is not getting delivered here. Uh, are we having trouble with that? We definitely got the beryllium plate. Quite a lot of it, actually. Also, don't know what that's doing there. Um, we're requesting 4k beryllium plate. And I think we have zero. Let's check. Decider. Combinator. Actually, I'll use an arithmetic. Beryllium plate times one. Output beryllium plate. We have zero beryllium plate. So how is it we're requesting 4,000? Uh, request stack threshold 40. And we do have beryllium plate here. Oh, stack size is 200. Uh, which is only 20 stacks for 4,000. So that's not even going to bring in a short train. So let's change that to 8,000. And we should see a delivery happening fairly soon. You wanted to manually send a Holmium solenoid rocket up? Yeah, if, depending on how long it's going to take uh, to get those solenoids. Which, it looks like it's going to take a bit longer. We're three-fifths full here. 16k, and then 24 is just a bit short of one launch. How full is this? 6.8. I think we'll send it manually. Also, let's get our construction spiders back home. Hold on, is this set up properly? It looks like it is. Oh, this is not beaconed. was close. Please drop a beacon. There you go. Alright, back to the mall. Actually, I'll park them here and have them place as much of this as possible first. And as for our solenoid rocket, let's do an early launch. Fantastic. Uh, and that should be all it takes. Beryllium plate is on the way. Fantastic. 8,000 in a single cargo wagon. Feels weird for plate. Uh, but yeah, that'll be everything we need for our pylon substations. And here goes a delivery of scrap. I said scrap, I meant to say scaffold. For some reason it's picking up 12,000. That's probably fine. It'll start loading once a minute has passed. So that it can make sure all of the inserters are in sync. Um... And that just leaves spamming this uh, blueprint, honestly. So 
put this about here. Oh. Nope. Um. Wait. The bots should have the scaffolding here already. Yeah, there they go. Uh, snap to grid, relative, and done. And then... I just realized we're going to need, like, a... a pylon just to connect to those, but I guess that's fine. Regular pylon has the same reach, just a smaller supply area. It's honestly easier if we just do this instead. Alright, cool. That should... I mean, we have to wait until the scaffolding is placed before... Uh, before we can properly fill out the blueprints, unfortunately, but that should be all it takes. And we set the construction bot signal to be available construction bots, so it should be requesting construction bots whenever, um, whenever the amount of bots we've got here isn't enough. Although, I don't know why they're going to sleep for quite so long when they're clearly fully powered and there's scaffolding to be placed. It already delivered about 4k? Hey, there's our substations. What a beautiful sight. And there's Veldak. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. So we've got uh, pylon substations fully automated. We've actually got 884 Energy Science Pack 2 available. I don't know... Oh, yes I do. Yes I do. I do know what we can do with just Energy Science Pack 2. Pylons don't need scaffolding themselves. I was wondering why it was letting me place that pylon, actually. I thought... Yeah. Well, it doesn't help with the rest of it anyway. Uh, the only trouble with this thing that can load logistic network stuff into long trains is it takes quite a while to load them. Also, what? Huh? 3.1k, 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 3.1k. 12,800. The train is asking for... Why are you like this? 1,200... Uh, 12,743... Space Platform Scaffold, which is not divisible by 4. So I guess we're closer to spaceships? Yes. Um, and how much have we actually got? 3,185 times 2 times 3 times 4. I think I know what happened here. That's 12,740. Twelve thousand seven hundred and forty-three is not divisible by 4. And for some reason... Um, probably because I set the request 
stack threshold smaller than a long train? Uh, the train was asking for an oddly specific number of scaffolding based on what we had here. I think I'll just set this one to only accept short trains. That might be better. So the precise loader did work, except that it it doesn't account for having to load something that isn't a multiple of the number of cargo wagons. Okay. I I'm, I'm really getting aggravated honestly by how the bots meander around for dozens and dozens of minutes not placing things uh like scaffolding. Um I'm guessing it might have something to do with just the sheer number of bot jobs I've created by requesting this scaffolding all over the place. So maybe I should run a deconstruction planner. Um, tile ghost, is that it? And that leaves the scaffolding that's already there. Yeah, I'm going to try it. I have a suspicion that that's why it's taking so long for bots to be issued orders. Because it's like iterating over all of these. And it's so that it doesn't slow the game down to a crawl, it's just slowing down how that works. What about this? And this. I think that's most of it. Maybe. All right. Let's see if that has an effect. I do not see construction bots in my... Do we have construction bots here? We do, we have 32. Oh, and all of them are active? Oh, there we go. I have a very strong suspicion that that helped. Are they getting sluggish with the big save? Uh, I don't think that's it. Yay, indeed. So the moral of the story... Uh, mol? The moral of the story is don't create half a million um, bot requests. Uh, bot jobs, rather. because they don't know how to, like, prioritize with issuing the orders or anything. We've mostly built the last of these smelters. I think we're going to need even more of them. But we're actually bumping up against our southern wall. Although there's not a whole lot of biters down here these days. Uh, speaking of which, let's get our military spiders. Have they been rearmed? They have not. Let's send them back up here then. All those tiles also enlarge the save significantly. That's unfortunate. There would definitely be some compression involved 
like it's not instead of saving every individual tile of uh scaffolding it's gonna you know if you can reduce that down to from here to here there is a square of these tiles it's probably gonna do that but yeah it definitely all adds up I'm still seeing construction bots asleep while there's scaffolding here in range of the robopods. Which is not what we're after. There go our first hundred uh, pylons. Fantastic. Alright, well, it's gonna be a while before we see good results here I guess um, but it is going to happen automatically I just have to give it a, a very uncomfortably long time before I can actually order them to make solar panels I suppose let's grab some more science and I think this will be the last time I pick these up manually Don't know what else we can queue up. Sure. Laser energy weapon damage and shooting speed, why not? Anything else we can get with just energy two? Uh remind yourself that energy shield is a slow and insidious killer. Indeed. Welcome the West dude. Good to see you again. Hope you're doing well. Oh we can get energy catalogue three, might as well. Um I'm just yeah, I'm just gonna queue up everything because why not? I should probably be set up like a train to bring this stuff over even if it even if we're bringing it to the temporary uh the temporary labs do they even need to be the temporary labs i don't really see why um we've kind of run out of room for belts for the sciences though I could put energy 2 on like this side of this belt actually but after that we would ha have to start using robots which would be a slight nuisance to set up but really not difficult build a second set maybe Bot is still broken. You need to fix that. Uh, no, I I think it's working. Speaking of, I think it's working. Let's check on that precise loader I set up. None of these inserters are sticking out, so I think it's working well enough. And the chests are balanced. Yep, that should be fine. And one with Mantis A ship and FTL. Nice. FTL's a good game. Wasn't FTL one of those games that was already cheap and then they added a absolutely massive... Uh, content patch that was free after a while. Same with uh, Terraria. When it first came out I enjoyed FTL after the first like three to four months. Didn't excite me anymore. Well you can't expect most games to uh, to be interesting to you until the end of time, right?
Fantastic. I'm really looking forward to designing the next rail block with, um... Uh, with pylon substations. Uh, speaking of designing a rail block, actually, should we patch it so that our... Here it is. Should we patch it so that we use pylon substations between the tracks? It's going to reach out so that our inserters and pumps and stuff picking up from train stops are, all, are always going to be already covered, right? I am Suck. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Wow, that's, uh, good. We could have just eight of these around each, um, rail block. And then probably just one in the middle would cover everything. Let's do it, I think. FTL might be something for non-Factorio stream day? Oh, definitely. I've had fun with FTL before. And I haven't played it in long enough that starting from scratch might be fun. I also played uh, Into the Breach on stream quite a while ago, but that was before I picked up a following from Factorio. I quite like Into the Breach. It's like... Uh, it's got some RNG, but it's only things like what monsters are you going to face and where are they going to pop up. Jamin, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. So once a turn starts, uh, it's all like completely deterministic. It's like a, it, it's it's like a game of chess. You you have the options available to you that you are able to find, um, but the RNG that it does have just gives the game some variance that makes it more interesting. As opposed to, you know, rookie missing point blank shot in XCOM 2, for example. I was trying to do Ancestry event to unlock the ship, but I thought I might as well try with ships till I finish A and B layouts, because it unlocks the ship too. Play FTL on normal with a lot of pausing. Yeah, I think... Unless you're going for some really difficult self-imposed challenge, uh, pausing is a given. Your superpower in FTL is that you are a speed super intelligence. I don't understand how some streamers do hard no pause and win most of the time. Uh, neither would I. I think. It depends on the ship. Some ships are obviously a lot more difficult than others. What were we doing down here? Oh, that's right. Oh, I forgot to actually pick up the uh, pylon substations. Could I carry... I'm very tempted to stop asking for big poles and substations already. I could do it while I'm in space at least. Pylon. I don't know if I'll have any occasion to put down basic pylons, but I'll carry them for starters, just in case. And pylon substations. Fantastic. Alright, let's head over here.
unlike, unlike on Discworld where a one in a million shot works 90% of the time, in XCOM a 99% chance misses nine tenth nine tenths of the time. Yep. Uh Long War has what is it called? A graze band? I think the default setting on it is maybe a bit high, but you can change it. Where basically more shots that would have missed get upgraded into grazes, and more shots that would have hit uh, or crit get downgraded into regular hits or grazes. That definitely helps smooth things out a little bit. Not 90%, but it has to be exactly one in a million. <laughs> uh, I love that reference. Good call. I actually reread that relatively recently. What was it? Uh, I mean, I know it was Discworld. It was one of the City Watch ones, but I can't remember which one specifically. The one with the dragon, right? Guards, guards? Either guards, guards, or night watch. Yeah, I think I remember guard... It, it was guards, guards, for reasons that I won't articulate, because it's a bit of a spoiler. It's been a decade or two since I read them. Yeah, I hadn't read them in a long time, and then... Uh, uh, someone I respect was kind of raving about how great they were, and I'm like, yeah, I should give them a reread. Absolutely. No such thing as a spoiler at this point. I don't necessarily subscribe to that way of looking at it because I mean no one has time literally to have seen read whatever it played like every single bit of fiction that's come out you know in if you go back 10 or 20 years or something or maybe they just weren't interested in it at the time uh Quite a lot of my favorite fiction or games or whatever that I've ever enjoyed. I did not expect to like it at all. Um, acknowledging that and then taking risks uh, on things that I don't think I'll like, there's definitely a downside to it. But it's worth it overall uh, to find things that are... Uh, unexpectedly great but yeah I mean maybe at the time you didn't think you'd like it maybe you never even heard of it also wrote short book about cats Pratchett co-authored Series about science with math and biology friends. Nice. If they haven't read it, either they have or they are idiots. Wow, okay. Um, let's figure out where the pylon substations are going to go. We'll try the corners to start with, and then right in the middle. I think that's probably the way this is going to go. You'll never be bored with that attitude? Yeah, definitely. Um, what else? Substation pylons. Oh, I forgot. Okay, apart from the spiders needing to be able to get around, we literally don't need any scaffolding. For this blueprint. Uh, but yeah, I think I will... Whereabouts is the middle? I think here, possibly? He 
yes, that does appear to be the middle. Okay. Copy that. Flip over here. Should be the same either way. And like so. How do magnets work? Miracles. The love of iron. I didn't enjoy the later Vimes books anywhere as much. Got rid of most of the funny stuff and all grimdark. I don't remember that much of them, to be honest. I, I reread, like, I don't know, three or four of those books uh, not that long ago. You aren't t hex Uh-oh. All magnets have north and south poles. Opposite poles are attracted to each other, while the same poles repel each other. When you rub a piece of iron... The love of iron. When you rub a piece of iron along a magnet... Yada yada. But why? Is there any question that you can't just but why up until the point of complete aggravation? Uh, let's put this right in the middle if we can. Fantastic. I think that's it. I think that's where we're going to put the island substations. Uh, let's add some red and green wires. And I think we'll just copy, paste, flip for the rest of those. They should all be connected. Looks good. Does that mean we can run a red wire, like, from here all the way to here if we need to? It's kind of neat, I suppose. How does fractional... No. When you rub those pieces, they fall in love with each other. <laughs> and you can't separate them without breaking them. <laughs> Okay, I see how it is. Nope. Um, I kind of want to just use these uh, big power poles to measure where the edge of the blueprint is going to be. This one's already here. Just so that we can use the same dimensions as our existing blueprint to make it a bit easier. Alright, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um have a look. Get rid of this for a moment. That should be fine. Okay. Uh, let's see. Space rail block. Create copy. Uh, select new contents. Line it up very carefully. Actually, how am I going to line it up right? Because we really have to 
make sure... Let's do this. When there's a uh, tile blueprints, uh, tile ghosts sticking out, uh, it doesn't necessarily put the beginning of the snap to grid where you would want it. Alright. Is that correct? Actually, yes, I thought it was one tile off. Right then. Select new contents. All of this. Remove the big electric poles. And I think that is our blueprint. Cool. Next, I want a version of this uh, with scaffolding all the way through it. Actually, I might just make that... Um, include the default train stations as well. Research go burn. Spiders don't seem to want to... Oh, there they go. Wait, do they not have scaffolding? They do. As long as they drop enough that they can get around a bit, and... enough that we can drop our train stations. Was Marx correct when he said that the workers of the world should resist with force to keep arms and ammunition as it prevents the bourgeoisie in power from exerting said power against the workers, obviously? But said, feel free to ask, but luckily there's no guarantee to provide an accurate answer or any answer at all. Indeed. Uh, El Presidenta, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. All right, let's grab some more scaffolding. And I wonder how our build up here is doing. Ooh. Better than expected. Let's drop some more. Let's move this over a tile. And make it three by three. Just willing to ask the deep questions because while I hate everyone, oh no, I also love my fellow humans, I just want them kept off my lawn. You do you, boo, but I add the qualifier, not near me. Fair enough. So my rights to do me, boo, and where your lawn begins? I guess is one way to put it. Um, I could go pick up some scaffolding myself as well, I guess. About two feet in front of my door as I live in an apartment building. Uh, let's see. It is so nice to instantly have 50, uh, pi uh, as soon as we've unlocked them, I've just got pylon substations, functionally infinite. Feels nice. I meant to pick up some scaffolding as well. And let's get the spiders back down this way. It might be a bit of a nuisance, but maybe I'll do it off stream, replace all of these big electric poles with pylons. 
I'm pretty sure almost every block is going to have somewhere in the middle that we could put a pile on that'll cover everything else. Maybe not this one, though. What floor? I'm at the 17th. That is a good floor to be on if your place is going to get flooded. Assuming it's going to be structurally sound enough. That was academic to me until quite recently. I didn't take any uh, cell phone footage myself, but other than that, uh, you could say it stopped being something that I observe happening to other people through their cell phones. Oh, we finished all our research. I guess I shouldn't be that surprised. We need the tier 2 material science packs probably next. Uh, so we're doing standard requester over here. And standard pickup down here. I'm going to run out of scaffolding. I just need to place some where the train stations need to be. Oh, and you can always see exactly where the middle is with this. That's nice. Hold on. That doesn't look quite right. Alright, scaffolding down to 50 already. No! I should have been a bit more careful with that. Where are my spiders? Here we go. They're a bit stuck. Those pylons are great. They really, really are. Uh, don't know that we need all of that scaffolding over there. Oh, well. Enjoy those stairs when you lose power. Yeah. Let's go... Train stop. And... Train stop. Can we get this one bit of scaffolding, please? Oh, I see. Just double check that's where it's supposed to be. That doesn't look right. That's definitely not right. And on this side, we really messed it up as well. Okay. messed that whole thing up. Yeah, there we go. Turn on my RoboPort. That is in the middle. And let's turn this into a standard pickup. Fantastic. Alright, so we're going to make a um, build space rail block pylon. Which is just implicitly going to include the default stations as well. Select new contents. Fine. No big electric poles. And I think that's it. Cool. 
I can stop having to line these up every time. Should have done that a long time ago. Alright, let's uh, make a few more of these. Actually, let me just run a decon planner over these big power poles, I think. Uh, is that going to be a problem here? No. Not at all, actually. Should be fine. And then... Go to town. And get our spiders to start chipping away at that. Also, I need to actually get them to carry uh, pylons. Murphy's Law? Which one? We have reliable power, but I talked to senior citizens who lived here since the 70s and power outage was common back then. Mothers with strollers used to climb stairs uphill both ways. Why is it so hard to scroll up here? Okay. Uh, I think our spiders are a bit stuck. Maybe I will take, like, four of them aside just to make them carry scaffolding. I'll keep them in the same group. That seems like a good idea. Anything else we can research with just energy two? And everything else we've already got? Uh, nope. Nope. Nope, nope. Not seeing it. Energy science pack two. Wait, was that two or three? That's three. Two. This is a much easier way to find it. Okay. So we're already at the point where we need to finish another type of science uh, to get that ball rolling again. Paper clip can spontaneously materialize somewhere in the universe. Uh, and even less likely a Boltzmann brain, right? Though on a long enough timeline, is that inevitable? Oh, that looks kind of weird. Seems like there's a pattern to it. Alright, I feel like there's probably something happening on Nervous that I should have checked on ten years ago. Let's bring our construction spiders over here. And military spiders. Um, back into the fray. Preferably focusing on... I should bring him back down south so we can chip away at where there's pollution. We can have them get there on this journey. I think. And... 
They could probably clear out all of this with one set of ammo, honestly. We'll see. That reminds me, someone, I think it was Rorosaur, mentioned there is a gantry mod. So that you don't personally have to be there to put things in Spidertrons, like the power armor stuff. You can probably auto-deploy them as well. You can auto-deploy them with, uh, what is it called? AAI, but I don't think it puts power armor stuff in the spiders. They could probably handle all of this just with their lasers. Probably. But I would rather not take chances. Let's send them back for resupply. Worst was when I was trapped in a hotel elevator. I hated that hotel because it had outside glass elevator that you were trapped in. Oh no. Take care, Whiskers. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good one. AAI is resource heavy. Yeah, it really is. Um, I was, I, I, I did a playthrough, or I was going to do a playthrough. We made some progress. Uh, I was going to do an entire playthrough with AAI, but... I think that was on my older computer. Or at least it was definitely before I upgraded the RAM on this thing. But the UPS got really, really bad. Even when we didn't have that many vehicles uh, active. I actually had to go through and shut down. If you could automate this, it might be a bit better. Um, but there's actually like a button to manually shut down the AI for an AAI vehicle. And after shutting down like hundreds of those, uh, the UPS went way back up. Simply copy the spider to another, and when you have equipment in your inventory, it will equip the Spidertron. Uh, yep, I'm aware of that. I just would like to automate it so I don't even have to be there. Also, I could do it remotely. I was traveling down from the 10th floor and suddenly stopped, waited a bit, and then pressed the emergency. Moved a few meters down and stopped again. That would be scary. Hello, Noxyway Gaming. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. What are we doing here? Um, well, I think we've researched everything we can with our uh, Energy Science Pack 2. Since we haven't added any other uh, Tier 2 Space Science uh, into the system just yet. We've also set up a automated system to spam uh, solar panels. Uh, we've got just a robo network here, reporting to LTN, logistic network contents, total logistic bots, and available construction bots. And these are our requests. Uh, we actually made it short trains only because the long trains requested an oddly specific number of space platforms, which it came here to pick up. And because it was requesting not a multiple of four, um, which I hadn't accounted for with this loader, uh, it was stuck there until we changed the request number. An apple may keep the doctor away, but a crashing elevator won't. True. Speaking of scaffolding, there it goes. 
Um, so we've got ourselves some substation pylons now, which we will be giving to our spiders. Pylon, pylon substation. Uh, which spider did I just... It's this one, isn't it? Yeah, let's copy that everywhere. Initially, it's going to take a little while to catch up with all of those. Island substation. Add-on power pole. Oh, I remember this. It's like intangible. So you can put it right on top of things or something. But it has just a one-by-one -one supply area. Tell you what, you go into a crashing elevator and if it works out for you, I might be willing to try. <laughs> Not with that attitude. Uh, let's bring our spiders down here. And I guess it's time to start thinking about... Probably material is the next tier 2 science pack I want, I want to do. Um, since the tier 2s require tier 1... Uh, let's see. Probably should have looked at those, shouldn't I? Quarks, superconductivity, already had force field, entanglement, lepton. Very exotic sounding. Uh, where is it? So yeah, all of the tier 2 science packs require tier 1. Uh, I think we'll probably end up making builds like this. So redoing the year one signs in the rail block isn't going to be much of an issue. Although, technically, if I want this throughput to be high, uh, I would have to double the production... Uh, to support the energy science pack one. We could put some speed modules on this um, if we wanted to keep that going full speed all the time, but honestly at this point I just want it all automated and we're really producing this at a pretty decent rate anyway. I mean we already plowed through everything that we just unlocked for now. Could you show us combat spiders' fights? Sure, no problem. Uh, Jamin, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. So, we're being a bit lazy here because these spider bases are mostly pretty small. But what I usually do is have them do a zigzag if I'm not going to control them manually. The reason for that is the worms are by far the biggest threat. But... They have to lead the target, so if you keep changing direction, they're going to miss a lot. And I've actually got two squads of spiders here, but I've been lazy lately just combining them into one. The spiders at the front have five uh, adaptive armor Mark IV, two portable RTGs, one laser, and just in case. And some personal batteries. I think these are the same. And then there's one spider per group, which is the designated medic. It just has a personal Roboport Mark II with some bots and repair packs instead of a laser. Uh, but yeah. Since the lasers pretty much never come into it, there's a really heavy focus on shields, um, so we prevent spiders taking any damage in the first place.
And yeah, I say, I find myself saying this a lot, but uh, I don't see anything wrong with your English whatsoever. And even if I did, it's fine. Mythbusters tried it. Buster died? Buster died. Oh, is that like the... Uh, like the target dummy. Is the RTG better than a fusion reactor? No, it's worse. Um, portable. Yeah, there we go. Uh, the first one you get is portable RTG. It only gives you 300 kilowatts. Um, we've unlocked portable RTG Mark II, which we haven't built yet, but it's not going to be very difficult with what we've got. Um, it does require four portable RTGs, wow. Uh, that doesn't quite double what we get from the RTGs. It's the same size, right? Four by four, yeah. And portable fusion reactor requires energy science pack four and deep space science pack. Uh... And that gives us... 750 kilowatt is what we get in vanilla, right? It is a long road to getting the equivalent to vanilla uh, portable fusion reactor. Buster's their dummy they use for lots of stuff. There were like three of them. Technically, they can't be RTGs unless they involve U-235 in their recipe. Uh, they do, actually. The portable RTG Mark II requires portable RTGs, and this one has uranium fuel cells as part of the recipe. Christoph Game, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. They did replace some of the plastic... Oh, right. But we were still on RTGs for a second there. How many rockets do we still have? Uh, many lots. Okay. Let's have the spiders hang out here for a bit longer. Also, if you're throwing the spiders into really thick... Uh, dangerous spider nests. Uh, it's better to give them more time for the shields to recharge. But these ones are pretty small. Also, never leave them standing around uh, if you can help it, because Sometimes even if you do a circle around to make sure there's nothing there, biters will send an expansion and then you'll get sniped by a big worm. And you could actually lose like 20 spiders as they sit there and do nothing, as they are slightly outranged by worm spit versus rockets. That's fun. Or you could be running uh, the... Rampant mod, and somewhat late in the game, you'll start to have nuke biters walking into your spiders. That's fun. Okay, I think we can just roll over these ones. Be a little bit careful there. Alright, that's probably about enough. Let's send them back for resupply. I don't want to take chances with them, especially when I'm not going to be paying attention to what they're doing. 
No arty there? Yeah, I don't have any artillery on the uh, eastern wall. This is an old wall, but it checks out. All right, what are we doing up here? More scaffolding? And then I think we'll start doing uh, material science over this way. How's our power look? Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. Uh, but I think we need like 40 gigawatts if we want to allow uh, these machines to run consistently. They're actually backed up though. Hmm. I want to get to 20 gigawatts and then see how it goes with the power switch management for that entire block of very, very power-hungry things. Was that a Star Wars reference? Possibly. Alright. Um, mostly the bottleneck here is just the bots being lazy, honestly. We've got... 139 construction bots sitting idle while there's lots of scaffolding and lots of scaffolding planning. Do solar panels work permanently in space? Yes. Every one of these tier 2 flat solar panels is just 3.7 megawatt consistently. Also 3 Aru. Welcome, welcome. Might be doing well. Good to see you again. Uh, are we actually out of things to research this time? I think we are. Could do some more zone discovery and this stuff. Why don't we do another rocket reusability? Actually, I really don't care about the reusability. It's almost too much at this point. It's safety that I want to max out. And survivability. I think survivability is what I care about more, but it's so expensive. Then again, where else are our resources going to go? We do have... Um, we do have a number of astronomic science packs backed up here. What's next science pack to do? I think I'm going to go for material too. Uh, because I've seen a lot of things I... Okay, this for one thing. Holmium accumulators are like way, 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 way more than twice as good as regular accumulators. Uh, there's a bunch of military stuff. There's... Breaking force. That's not too exciting. Oh, final stack upgrade. That's a good one. Heavy bearing. That's probably an intermediate product, right? What is this? Quantum processor. Well, let's check the material science pack 2. I should really learn to do it this way. Construction pylon requires that, but we also need astro. Material fabricator? Synthesizes new materials across between a particle collider and a 3D printer. Matter fusion? Good grief. I would spend a lot more time browsing the uh, research unlocks if it didn't pause the game. Can I change that with a console command? It won't call it cheating or anything, will it? Ken Ken, thank you for the follow. 
Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I think I need to be a little bit more conservative about how many... I, I should just extend this one block at a time because it seems like the more... I mean, we already sort of confirmed this. The more tiles we try to plan out all at once, the slower the bots seem to get at actually going out there. So let's put one of these up here. And hopefully that'll get built a lot more quickly. You could just open the save in multiplayer. Is this solo? Yes, indeed. Smeagol, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. There is an option to disable that pause thing in interface options. Interface. Show grid when game is paused. Technology screen opens when research is complete. All right, let's just read all of them. Minimap, tips and tricks, turret radius, show. Enable recipe notifications? Is that, is that that little sound when you're handcrafting? Tool window. What even is tool window? Show beacon modules in alt mode? Why would you not do that? I thought we are seeing beacon modules in alt mode though. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. Set quick bar filter by clicking with item. I haven't played around with some of these. Also, did we finish building this? Pretty much. I just haven't put the lights in place. This is looking a bit full. We can probably get away with one more stack. Oh, what's this? We need some cliff explosive. Have the spiders actually run out? Nope, they're fine. Fantastic. Back to the mall with you. Notification is on new items from research under interface. I guess I was wrong since I always open my games in multiplayer. Fair enough. Notification is the exclamation mark on new items from research. Oh, right. Yeah, I should turn that off for... Uh, when I'm doing a familiar playthrough, because I tend to just mouse over all of these just to get rid of them. Still, wide area beacons are now a thing. Um, I think I already said we could automate this here. So we need regular beacons. And then we're going to need to request energy catalog be delivered here. Did I set this up so short trains can pick it up? Not at all. Oh. There's exactly zero energy catalogs here. Either we haven't made any more since the first delivery over here, which is possible, or the way I set it up earlier with... Because... because Exactly one train load of these makes exactly one train load of these. But because we had the slightly imprecise just because of the stack size um, balanced loader here, we actually ended up with a few 
uh, I think it was exactly four energy catalogs in this inserter when there were like two of them missing for each of these cargo wagons. So I wanted to see if changing the stack size to one, it should have this perfectly balanced and then we don't request a train until, until this is all going to load it. But either we haven't had another train arrive up here since then, or it perfectly finished another train load leaving exactly zero. And as always, it is electromagnetic field data that we're struggling on, which I think is going to trace back to copper again. Yep. Let's see. Copper is here. It's like half full. So it's been... I was going to say it's been here a while, but that's looking a bit scarce. Probably because I started consuming it from the main bus base again. I think it's about time... I'm going to add another block to deliver items from the ground. I was thinking of doing it over here. The length of the train trips doesn't really matter that much. And even so, lots of copper is going to go here, so if we have the train pick up from here, that'll work. Alright, let's grab our blueprint. Uh, space exploration. Rail block landing pads. The only... Oh, that's the one with regular rail. Space exploration... Space block landing pads. The only thing I don't like about this is it's not using the, uh, the pylons yet. Why don't we just start by placing the pylons? Alright, let's bring our spiders over there. Fluid output full? Do you mean down here? Uh, no, it looks okay. It's also way too many scaffolds. Uh, what about it? Oh, that reminds me. I was going to remove some of the tile ghosts. so that these bots will do their thing a bit quicker. They don't actually reach here yet because the, um, the roboports are missing. The rocket landing area is mostly empty yet full of scaffolding. Yeah, I decided I just wanted to fill scaffolding out everywhere. Not worry about removing it. It means I can have spiders walk directly to and fro without having to think about it, for example. No, you do not run off and then complain when the spiders run away. Fantastic. Alright. This is happening surprisingly quickly now. Should we get more bots, or are they being delivered automatically? They are not being delivered automatically. How many do we have? 
148 of them are idle right now. Oh, just dropped to 38. But it didn't use all of them. For the low grit domes? Using accumulator in space? Just a little bit. It lets us uh, know how our power is doing, for one thing. Also, my goodness, these things can uh, spike with the power usage. When you start getting to 1k to 2k stones, where you're trying to finish the edge, count your strokes on each side. Oh, knife sharpening. Okay. Uh, spiders are already resupplied, actually. Send them over this way. And I want to make an updated version of this blueprint that uses the pylon substations. You have a blueprint available somewhere for your city blocks? Uh, yes. I don't think I've uploaded the space versions yet, but I'm pretty sure I've put it up there. Also, it's on the Discord. I could double check. Let's see. Left hand drive. It's taking a second to load. Oh no, it's loading like unrelated tabs. I should probably get a browser that I use while I'm streaming that doesn't have anything open. Uh, thank you for the follow, Poimi Mania. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Left hand drive, straight rail, two way roundabout. That's not the block. 18 stop L quadruple C L depot. If that's there, then the rail box should definitely be there somewhere. Um, or not, apparently. Okay, well, if you need it this instant, you could grab the 18-stop uh, depot and then strip some of that away. But I'll definitely upload that shortly. What browser are you using? Uh, Opera GX at the moment, which mostly I've liked, but currently I have a complaint. Uh, it likes to... It did this before, but it was fixable, and then I guess there was an update or something. Um, but it likes to turn on the gamer lighting on my mouse, which I'm not... Uh, which is not a feature that I that particularly enjoy. Um, and I actually can't turn it off. Well, if I if I go into like uh, Logitech gaming software and then just go to the gamer lighting settings for the mouse, it immediately switches it off because that's what I've got it set to. But if I like full screen a video, it turns on the freaking gamer lighting on the mouse in the Opera color, uh, Opera GX colors. They are not originally... Isn't there a quick profile switching in that browser? Maybe. I don't know the features of it that well. Uh, I, I, I started playing around with it because it has uh, bandwidth and CPU and RAM like speed limits that you can set. Or limits, rather. 
completely disabled the lighting on my mouse. It's so annoying that you can almost... You almost can't get good hardware without such... <laughs> yeah. Factorio was actually doing the same thing. Making the uh, logo go the, like, Factorio orange color. That was a little bit of a nuisance to figure out how to fix as well. Alright, let's drop our blueprint. And then I'm going to remove the power poles. And everything's actually already covered with the substations. Beautiful. We're going to need some cargo landing pads. I forget if we have those here. Um, I really need to separate... If I'm going to turn these on and off, I, I really need to separate these... Um, combinators so that I can choose what we're crafting at a moment's notice. I think for now I'll just um, set these to zero. I also haven't yet come up with an idea I really like for how to have a bunch of priorities for these things. Build order. What's this? Pylons. Why is it not trying to make the cargo landing pads? Oh, I think it means we've already got the cargo landing pads. Let's see. Cargo landing pad. We have eight. Fantastic. Alright, I think I will make another one of these blocks down here. Um, wish I kept that deconstruction planner. I'll just do this part manually. And... Drop in our space rail block. Copy paste this actually. It's not going to copy the um, scaffolding, is it? Uh, I guess that's not going to be kept in my inventory either. We just need to... I didn't actually copy the scaffolding. Alright. Let's go... Build that out. Get our spiders to pay it a visit. They're going to need to pay more than one visit, that's for sure. You can choose to select the tiles in the blueprint. Yeah, I know, I just forgot to. Like, I forgot it wasn't default. McDonald's adds extra sugar and butter to their bread to make it sweeter. Yeah. Pizza places do it? Uh, from what I understand, it's not much of an exaggeration to say there's sugar shoved into basically everything in the states. Like, you would try to comedically exaggerate it and then they'd tell you, no, yeah, no, that that's, that's how they do it.
Okay. Um. One thing that was quite weird for me to get my head around uh, was being told that, like, fresh, uh, like, vegetables, fruit and veg, was, like, not affordable, depending on where you are in the U.S. That's wild. I think we're getting given bots which we wouldn't have been requesting here. If that logistic, uh, if that robo port was in the right place already, um, because it actually asks the robo network about the bots. Also, we're missing a wire here, which is not helping. Last time I had McDee's was about eight years ago, when I got out of the hosting center at 4 a.m. and literally nothing else was open. Yeah. Let's bring our spiders back. Actually, I was going to pick them up myself, but why don't I get the lead spider to pick up those cargo landing pads? On the way, eight, four, fantastic. And as soon as it leaves, I'll get rid of those requests. Whoops. Oh. No, we don't have logistic bots here. That'll be fine. I thought the logistic bots were going to steal them and send them back here for a minute there fantastic uh, I guess we should lay out the next lot of scaffolding How's that power looking now? 16.1 gigawatt. I thought we had like 20. Is it all connected? I think it is. Hmm. I can't remember if 30 or 40 was our target. I think it's 40. Also, we need to move these robo ports just a little bit. That should be a long arm inserter, actually. Oh, that's why that wasn't connected, because it was hopping across the substation. Except we can just connect that directly. All right, and it was just the four in the cardinal directions that we needed to change like that. All right, uh, copper I wanted to put maybe here. It's a pretty direct route for it to leave this way. Copper plate. Oops. Oh, it's not navset, that's why. I was wondering why it was jumping around so much. This one is blacklist. This is copper plate. Change the station name. Add a symbol on the map. And last but not least, can I actually shift right click, shift left click for these? It's a little bit dangerous, but I'm sure we'll be fine. 
Now this orbit copper plate, so there should probably immediately be a rocket on its way up with copper plate, unless we're still struggling, which is a distinct possibility. Oh wow, we're really, really struggling, actually. Um, well, I don't think having two cargo rocket silos delivering copper plate is particularly relevant just yet. I suppose we could add more smelters? If we extend our wall out here... Uh, I don't really want to have to build another wall, but it is a really short wall that we could build here. Uh, let's grab our... We'll start from tier 2. Wall Mark 5, no artillery. Space exploration version. We'll take advantage of some of these cliffs. And we'll have to add something to the corner there. Alright, construction spiders. Head on down. Gonna need to extend the rail out. That would be a good a good spot to start. That's gonna be slightly in the way. I think we'll just landfill that part. Probably makes as much sense to go from through here. Let's just remove all of this. There's not much oil here. Also, we need to get rid of that old rail. Where does this even go? Nowhere. Good. that there for now. Probably don't need it. Grab our highway. See if I can remember where this goes. There we go. Should be fine. I'll stop it there for the moment. Of course, we've got other places where we've got room to put more smelters, but uh, it's just a little easier to remember any everything and deal with it if we keep things in related blocks. Okay. I guess that copper plate isn't coming for a while. Where did we park our spiders? There they are. Oh, the map didn't update. This thing was finished. Interesting. It's definitely, much, uh, despite all the nuisance of waiting for the scaffolding to be placed, it's definitely much easier expanding the solar out this way. Oh, we're missing some scaffolding here still.
I love the spray of all of the bots filling up the spiders like that. Alright, so that should be that. I think I forgot to pick up those cargo landing pads, actually. Whoops. So we've probably got, yeah, more than four of them here now. While we're not trying to craft anything in particular, I think I'll turn all of these, whoops, turn all of these on. We could probably stop making big electric poles and substations now. Pipes tend to take forever to catch up with. All right. That should be fine. And it seems like pylons are a high priority, which I'm not complaining about. Why put accumulator in space? Uh, well, for one thing, we can use it for power managing this stuff. Um, we can check the accumulator signal here. To decide whether these should be switched on. To accumulate in space. Yes. Speaking of which, I was going to see if we can get away with... Whoops. See if we can get away with powering up a few more of these now. So that's one quarter. Yeah, that's looking good. Fantastic. If I connect more of these, let's double it. And you can see the power switch in action. Accumula- oh my goodness, the accumulator charge is dropping very, very quickly. Okay, that was a little more than I was expecting. Um, let's not do that for now. Or I could add, like, half of these. Once this is full again, this is going to switch on. That's still too much. Disconnect this one. Oh, we're actually powered and gaining a accumulator charge. That's good. Yeah, that's a pretty clear indicator of how we're doing power-wise. And if we do go over, that's not actually going to make everything fall apart because the power will just switch off here. Put a beacon with efficiency modules there? Oh yeah, we can do that now. That's right, I was actually just beginning to uh, to lay out beacon production here. Beacon... Uh, wide area beacon. But we're going to need energy catalogs delivered to our mall. Energy. It's a lot. 8,000. So once we actually get a delivery of electromagnetic field data here, and that gets processed, we'll get 8,000 catalogs, which is going to trigger a delivery up here, I think. Should probably make this a high priority. Priority. Otherwise, it's all just going to get dumped into science. 
probably the rocket survivability that we're researching is not helping us with our resource consumption either. I might pause it. It's going to take a very, very long time. And we need resources. Copper plate was um, looking a bit sparse by the time it got down here earlier. 8k beacons will last you for like three more playthroughs. Uh, that's just like what it takes to trigger a train delivery here. I could go out of my way to... I could steal some uh, catalogs from up here, I guess. How many beacons do we get out of catalogs? It's literally one to one. Okay, maybe I will. Away we go. And... How do I want to do this? Just put a chest on the inside of it. Uh, I believe these stack to 50, right? I'll just do a couple of stacks. Okay. Spiders have done their thing, finally. And now I can't copy-paste this because I am full, actually. Let's, um, just change the name of that one back for the moment. And this goes here. And then I'll change this back to Nervous Orbit, Nervous Orbit Copper Plate. If I can find it. It should be one of the first. Omnium plate. There it is. Copper plate. And copy this over here again to make sure everything's all Uh, set to default so it doesn't get used accidentally. Okay. Meanwhile, our spiders seem to be slacking. Have we run out of roboports? That's a bit odd. I should probably maybe put a limiter on these temporarily so we don't just pour all of our resources into it until the end of time for now. What? What's going on? Oh. I keep making this mistake. Pump's facing the wrong way. Probably because I keep copy-pasting the uh, pumps and storage tanks. How close are we to getting a delivery of electromagnetic field data? Ion stream. It's copper, isn't it? Oh, we got some copper here. Amazing. That means there must be some copper probably up here. There was. We already emptied it. Or was that little trickle from this? Or maybe the copper came from 
here? No? Where even did that copper come from? What does your pollution map look like on Nalvis? Uh, wow. <laughs> it covers most of the planet now. Uh, I think we're on our way to the bad ending. For Nalvis. That's unfortunate. She'll be right. Will she, though? Or are we about to figure out possibly the answer to the Fermi Paradox and not like it? Alright, just build most of that. And then build this. Auto save. I'm holding shift, it better not mess up my click order. Okay, that's kind of okay. And then back to the mall. It feels weird having this much safety. Um... for building walls that are necessary. Or that might be necessary. Okay. Speaking of which, where are our military spiders? Let's get them back into it. Let's get them under the pollution cloud. Right about up here somewhere. Get all the little expansions out of the way. Deserves a zigzag, I think. them zigzag their way back home. And just a little bit more. That should be enough. Do not accidentally single click it now. All of the laser turrets I'm pointing at have like one, two, or three kills. I guess they get killed relatively often. This one has 3,447, the flamethrower turret. I guess the biters like this spot. Right. Expand solar some more. Probably should have started with the one that's closer. Bots are on holiday. Alright, uh, I was going to take some energy capsules. 
If we get there before the train does, which I'm sure we will, theoretically it shouldn't trigger a um, delivery of energy capsules here until we're down to zero. Fantastic, we're finally getting the old data again. How much copper does it take to get field data? Blank data card and 50 ion stream. Uh, let's see. One copper becomes a hundred ion stream, so I don't think that's much of an issue. And a single blank data card is actually six copper. That's a bit more severe. So, rounded up to nine, 72,000 copper for like 8,000 of those cards. That's a lot. All right, we're getting beacons perhaps? We're getting beacons. Uh, I think I should probably add Holmium Cable to the list of things not to shove into these little requester chests. Let's make this one Holmium Everything. Holmium Cable. Holmium Solenoid. And... Add... I'm gonna need another Combinator. Add those to our list of things that we remove from those requested chests. Chromium plate. Negative a million. Cable. And solenoid. So that green wire just goes to these request chests, which are set to set requests, and a negative will be ignored. Did we already get the beacons? Beacon. Wide area beacon. We already have ten. Fantastic. Uh, where's my request for beacons? Wide area beacon. They stacked 25. So let's maybe set our request for these to 50. Thank you for the follow, uh, Trotel. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay then. Uh, let me pick up those, how you say, cargo landing pads. Actually, I meant to request four. It's fine. So the next block we design is going to include wide area beacons. Kind of looking forward to this. Spider legs are being a bit odd. And they're actually preventing the bot from dropping this as well. I don't know exactly what the conditions are to get spiders to dance like this. But uh, there you go. We're still missing robo-pots. Why is that? Oh, wait. We might have some back here, actually. Yeah, we do. Should probably bump up the request for those a little bit higher than one stack.
flamethrower turrets are just doing too good. It's that, but also the laser turrets tend to be the ones that get targeted by the spitters. They actually die every once in a while. When I built my first spider, I named it Fred Astaire and set it on a circular <laughs> belt square. I've seen a little music video where someone had a little tiny circle of belt to make it look like the spider was DJing. That was adorable. Why is this? Oh, because there's no grover pot. That's why. Alright, let's head back. Don't spiders ignore belts, though? Uh, not exactly. We'll do a little illustration here. One, two, three, four. Okay, so it's not standing on any of the belts right now. It's avoiding touching them. Let's add some more belt. And see what happens. What? Huh? Okay, this is news to me. <laughs> Um, do they just ignore... Oh, now it's doing it. Wait, what? Hold on. Did this change, or is it different with Space Belt? Okay, we need to... We need to test this. Where, where did our construction spiders go? Uh, come over here, please. And then... Distraction successful. <laughs> Indeed. How, away, how far away from the next module are you? Will you incorporate them into your builds? That's a good question, actually. I haven't thought much about modules. Uh, so we need broad energy catalogs for efficiency 6, energy catalog for 5, chromium plate and machine learning data for 4. Machine learning data we haven't bumped into yet since we started doing the rail block. Rail blocks. Oh, is it literal... That's right. I thought I remembered using it for something. Regular rocket science packs. I suppose if we do a rail block to build regular rocket science packs, we can take the excess machine learning data. And literally the only other use for it is tier 4 modules. Okay, this right here... This is not what I've seen before. It's like the... I don't know if this is a SE specific thing, or if they changed it in vanilla, or what. But normally, if there's nowhere else for the legs to go except on belts, they will actually get pushed all the way down. Maybe to save UPS or something... The legs just give up. But normally if you put them over here, for example, uh, a spider would have like half its legs in place and the other half would have to keep treading. Probably just forgot the dancing spider mod? No, no, it was vanilla behavior, I swear. I promise. Okay, let's do a... Can I just copy one of these? Oops. 
should all be correct. Let's see if we can fit it. We can if we go over the uranium, which... Eh. Or we could put this down here. Hold on. Let me just trim this extra stuff. That we don't need. Uh, I didn't mean for any of that to actually get built. Cool. Can't get the straight bit. No. Oh. Anyway, distractions. Um, let's do that. Cut this. Bring it down here-ish. I'm gonna need one of those crisscross things, perhaps. Don't need it there. That should be all it takes, but I should double check it. Also, until... Well, there's no targets here, but even so, until we're ready, let's not summon the artillery trait. Excuse me. Construction spiders move over a little bit, please. Don't forget this part. Okay. That should do it. We need to power this thing. Oh, they're not carrying any regular solar panels anymore. Um, can't exactly upgrade these to tier 2 solar panels. I think what we'll do is just drop some solar panels here and connect it. But also this should be connected to the main power network. No harm in having a bit of a redundant power source over here though. Okay, so that gives us uh, a train with no path, trying to deliver pipes. Where does the path end? It should, if it can get there, it should have a path. Let's see. It should definitely have a path. If the train can get this far, it can go here, here, here. Why are these flashing? Because they're not connected. Yep, that's it. The moment that bit of rail gets placed. We should see that train in motion. Signal wire on the rail? Uh, yeah, I haven't actually been using it, so I'm not too worried. There goes our train. Fantastic. Uh, we definitely need to make sure this is connected somehow. Just barely. The 
green glow of this kind of reminds me of Tiberium. Although, afraid of the dark, highlighting stuff around my mouse definitely helps. What does LTN use for its communication, not the signal wise? Yeah, it's all ESP. It just knows. The Tiberium must grow? Uh oh. So why do we have a long train delivering a hundred pipe, I wonder? Oh well. Also, if we just do this, it should sort itself out as far as the bots go. And then this wall will self-build and self-reinforce. Alright, let's get our construction spiders back up here. As soon as that wall is looking good, we can tear down this one and expand our smelting setup. I probably should, especially now that I know 50 logistic bots in one network doesn't cause... Uh, what is it called? The bot interference wind? I should probably make a version of this that uses bots instead of belts. Wouldn't have the same throughput problem with the sand, perhaps? Although, if we do limit it to 50 bots per block, then it definitely would. Um, it would be more UPS friendly as well if we're going to make a whole bunch of these if they're using bots instead of belts, I think. But yeah, the reason... The reason the sand isn't keeping up with the demand is... It's supposed to fill up while it's smelting other things. But apparently there's a really, really big demand for glass right now. Or it's just the new smelters getting into the groove. Because I still have all of these things uh, acting independently. Just based off of their local um, storage of input and output. I want to make a version of this that has... Well, that would use this red and green wire. Um, where we look at some global storage that we have, compare what we've got for each resource, and it's not an absolute decision. Like, uh, obviously, if we've got no more room for copper plate here, and Central tells us to make copper plate, we're not going to do it in this block. But I would like to set it up so that we can have a central planning giving us priorities in each of the Omni Smelter blocks. That way we don't end up, you know, really wanting iron plate. We make a bunch of smelters, but then all of the iron plate is going to steal until we get a certain amount of steel stored. not entirely sure how I would go about it all, though. I haven't... I, I've thought about it a while, a little bit, but I haven't really, like, sat down and tried to figure it out since I decided that that's something I want to do. Was it 50 bots per network, or was it per planet? I thought it was per planet. That was my assumption as well, sh uh, Shot Shadow. But uh, I did a little experiment, and it seems to be 50 per... Robo network. We just had, uh, I think it was on Nalvis somewhere we've got a robo network with 50 logistic bots uh, that's never been resupplied. It was just manually dropped in and it never had any problems. 
What are you talking about? Uh, so with the space exploration mod, by default, um, if you have more than 50 logistic bots, they start crashing. Um, and the more bots you have and use, the more often they crash. Uh, you have some research, it's called Swarm Safety. It doesn't actually stop the bots from crashing, but it just makes it so that they don't damage things when they crash. Um, if you have a certain number of logistic bots. 500 active logistic bots per level, so this is uh, um, 5,000... Uh, 6,000. Derp. I was about to say like 5,200 or something. That safety thing says 500? Uh, 500 per level, and it's an infinite research. So SE is basically preventing big logistic bot-driven factories. Preventing? No. Um, but it does make it a little bit less... I, I wouldn't exactly say bots can be an answer to everything, but you're, you're a little bit less incentivized to go all in on bots. Okay. Um, let's just send the spiders over so that those little things get built so they can stop flashing at us. And I think down here... We will start on material science. Also, let's get that spider to follow the leader. Maybe I shouldn't have a block of solar panels that makes the UPS drop to 20 when all of these spiders pick their way across it. So close by. Okay, rail block goes here. What's our first step for... Well, we're going to have to do material science pack one. But I, I'm thinking the part where we actually do the sciences is probably going to look very similar to this. Um... So, let's have a look. Material Science Pack 1 requires material catalog, significant data, iridium plate, insight, and this is the same except it's girders and broad, just like with energy. We've got eight data cards here. Um, the tier 2 data cards just require different inputs until we get to this one. This one requires locomotives. Okay. Corrosion resistance. Uh, oh, so it doesn't do the thing that the force field data did where it needs two of the tier one datas. Let's see. Broad material catalog. Rigidity, pressure, corrosion, impact. Rigidity, pressure, 1000 cosmic water. And then it spits out most of it. Uh, corrosion, and impact. So, material's actually going to be a lot more straightforward. That's nice. We could try doing the equivalent of what we did in the main bus base uh, for the first four data cards and cram it into a block. 
but no, I think I'm done doing things that way. I, I regretted doing it this way relatively quickly. So let's just... What happened to this spider? Also, what are we... Are we still missing this robopot? Hold on. Okay, first of all... You can go over here, please. Second of all, robopods. You're not requesting any robopods, it's just me, that's why. Uh, considering how full their inventory is, maybe... No, I th think we can get away with one more request. Quite easily, actually. So, ten robopods. Okay. That's going to be a lot of robopods, actually. What's missing over here? One bit of scaffolding. And same thing down here. Could just remove that for now. Please come over here with your scaffolding. Each of the color sciences have a unique philosophy. Material is just getting rid of scrap. Energy is dealing with probabilities of getting an ingredient. Astro is using previous tiers for higher tiers. Don't they all do that? And biological is loop dependencies slash priority. Interesting. So I thought... Okay, for one thing we need energy science pack 1 to make energy science pack 2. That holds true for material. Uh, also energy needed these two to make force field. Astro. Uh, I can't fit all of that in my head all at once. Let's just start building this block. Okay. One thing at a time. Is this it? Yes. Okay. Uh, so what do we actually need? Let's just start with cold thermodynamics data. We need thermodynamics facilities. Uh, two physical input uh, inputs, fluid in, fluid out. Two physical outputs. Very straightforward, actually, for something that we're going to do in an entire rail block. I don't think we have any laser facilities handy, though. I'll go pick some up. Thank you for the follow, Gunmarin. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And laser facilities. All of them, please. Apparently, we don't have any. How is this the case? Because I didn't turn this back on. That's a thermodynamics facility anyway. Oh, that's also probably why. Um... Apparently we've only got three... That's beacons. Cargo landing pads are five. I thought we were making... F oh, eight. Okay, as long as we're making these uh, laser facilities right now. They're quite big, right? The laser facilities? 
10 or 20 should be more than enough to get a feel. Or how much we can fit in a block. We're just bottlenecked on the insiders for this. Two more, one more. Alright, that's good. Laser facility. Uh, what? Don't tell me I got the wrong facility. Thermodynamics facility. Oh no. Um, we don't happen to have any of those here, right? That's a laser. Thermo. It looks almost identical as well. Well, on the plus side, we have a few laser facilities handy now, I suppose. Can we stop with the cargo landing pads? They take a long time, just because of the logistics. That's still laser facility. Stop that. That's beacon. Okay, fine. Why are we still making beacons? How many beacons did I ask for? We've got fifth. We're asking for fifty. We've got zero, so it was still putting them in my inventory. Okay. Uh, tell you what. Give the beacons a rest for, uh, rest for now. We have higher priorities. Are we not... Oh, we've got thermodynamics facilities, apparently. Yeah, we did. Wouldn't it be faster to just put an other, another crafting block down? Uh, it would definitely be worthwhile, I think, to expand this to, like, six machines, I think. There's also some redesigns of this I want to do that are going to be quite tricky to figure out. Like, basically I want to keep them from switching recipes quite so often. To do that... I'm considering uh, some memory cells and timers and stuff so that basically it only changes the signal that's being sent to the crafting combinator once per minute. Actually, yeah, just a, a memory cell and a timer. Uh it actually took a lot more, um... Okay, that's less than I thought, but still. Uh, more combinators than I would like to make a memory cell that gets overwritten every time you pulse something into it. Uh, to be fair, this part here is a pulse generator, so you could think of these seven combinators. You, depending on how you set things up, you could consider these seven combinators here. Uh, the memory cell plus the timer and everything. Except this is set up so that as long as you wait three ticks, otherwise it can't handle that, uh, it'll pulse in something and then override it whenever you want. I imagine if I set it up so that I could probably just set it up so that it purges the memory cell and then accepts whatever's coming in for one tick just once per minute or something. 
might not take as many combinators. Something to think about. And that would also effectively add some latch behavior whereby, you know, if we're looking for, I don't know, 10 electric furnaces, we're going to craft a bunch of them, we're going to have more than 10, and then when we take one of them, it's not going to drop below the amount we're requesting immediately and switch the recipe. Let's get some... Thermodynamics facilities, we don't need any laser facilities for now, actually. We've already got 10, that's a good start. Okay. So, what were we making here? I believe it was cold thermodynamics data. Hot and pressure. Pressure is tier two. Okay. Cold and hot are very, very similar, actually. I'm going to take a wild guess and say that we're going to need them in equal amounts, perhaps. As far as material catalogue is concerned, that is definitely the case. And from what we've seen so far... Um, that's literally the only thing cold goes into. About hot. Hot thermodynamics data only goes into material catalogue. Okay. So these are taking the same inputs except for fluids, the same outputs except for fluids, and the actual desired product. Um, and they take exactly the same amount of time. So I think what we'll do is half of the block is going to be uh, cold, thermodynamic starter, and half is going to be hot. And the cold thermodynamics data is just going to be strictly more complicated than the hot because the hot just doesn't have a fluid output. So we'll design the cold first. And that's going to go there. And I think. It's so nice having all of this just powered. That That is beautiful. Your UPS is just going to cry. Have you considered getting fire insurance? What do you mean going to cry? It's been crying. Also, I don't know if I said earlier, Shot Shadow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, how fast do these... Oh, and we have beacons now. That makes it more complicated, but also awesome. Okay, so how do we... Oh, wow, that's... That's really easy. In fact, we could probably... Let's say we have a beacon in the middle here. Uh, we could actually put... Can we put these a bit closer together? And still have the... Room for the outputs? I think so. Maybe. Uh, let's see. Underground belt goes here. Underground belt goes here. Output goes here. Output goes here. And there is more than enough room. 
So if that one tile matters, then that's how that's going to go. Curious what CPU do you have? Uh, let me check. If I remember how. Uh, this one? <clears throat> no. I still haven't learned everything in Windows 10. Like stuff that I took for granted being able to do in a second. Why don't we just use CPU Z? <clears throat> uh, no updates right now, thank you. Intel Core i7 uh, 10.07.00F. <clears throat> Socket 1200, 2.9 gigahertz. Uh, where is it? I can't remember how many cores. Is it eight? Yeah, eight cores. 16 threads. <clears throat> Task manager performance. Oh yeah, that's pretty easy. It says, uh, under task manager performance, it says 4.94 gigahertz. Uh, base speed is 2.9, obviously. <clears throat> Why double underground pipes for symmetry? Also, you're only outputting from half of the machines. What do you mean? What do you mean? Also, we don't actually need that extra space. Or do we? Uh, I think we'll do the... Pipes for the fluid input like this. So we can do short inserters for input like that. And... We're definitely not going to need this nonsense. So, nice and easy. Only two output inserters? Oh, right. Yeah, I think you were right about that, actually. Anyway, uh, gonna do it like this. This, 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 this. This beacon is huge, I love it. Uh, can we fit, like, eight of these under it? On each side? We can. Fantastic. So we could probably do, uh, two beacons, 16 machines. Or, if we really want to go all out, 16, uh, 8, 16, 32 for each. I think that's the way we'll lay things out. 10 megawatt minimum consumption on the beacon, wow. Although it's really not that big of a deal up here. That's like three flat solar panels. Come to think of it, we could always just put some flat solar panels next to them. Uh, that's... That almost pays for it already. So, yeah, I think we'll put this here, perhaps? Finish this a bit more before we copy-paste it. We'll probably... It depends on the speed. Oh, I think the spiders picked this up and it's in their trash slots. Uh, I definitely had thermodynamics facilities, didn't I? Where did they go? There's so many spiders. Oh boy. Alright, I think we're, we're going back to the mall. It's going to be the easier way to sort this out.
Can you even power it? Yes. Don't need all four and inserter output. Uh, yes. What I was about to do is rate calculator to see how fast the outputs would be for this. Um, we will have some junk outputs. Depending on the rate, uh, it will or won't be the case that I want to use a splitter to filter the outputs after they all just go into this belt. Or we'll have to change the shape of this um, and use filter inserters for the outputs. Alright, do I have some... Some thermodynamics facilities. There we go. Have we not made any more? Thermodynamics facility. Yeah, we're still making other things. Okay. I think I'll get the spiders... ...to carry some. all of the spiders, nice and quick. Alright, now unless they individually pick up more than five thermodynamics facilities, they're not gonna chuck them in the logistic trash. Doesn't SE disable buildings with more than one beacon affecting it? Yes, it does. That's why we're putting one beacon over here, and if we need to go all out, I'm going to put this over here. Uh, so, oops, that's going to go there, and then, uh, we can't productivity this, I presume, so we're going to speed module it. Depending on how fast that is, we're going to speed and or efficiency this. Now that we're considering using a lot of efficiency modules, I think I'll I think I'll do a build for that. I need the bots to actually place this so I can change the recipe. Efficiency one. Uh, can't see where that goes. Nope, stop, 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 stop. Too fast, too fast. Efficiency 2. Efficiency 3. Okay, and we need to change these green chests. Efficient. Efficiency 1. to chests. Oh. I messed that up a bit. I think these have some manual shared resources and stuff. Yeah, we're just direct inserting the efficiency twos. Okay. Although, just in case we have any that got into the bot network. Nope, right, that's fine. Limit this based on efficiency threes. And efficiency threes go here. And we'll get the bots to pick up those speed modules. Also, we need... I was going to say we need a substation, but actually... A pylon would be better, I think.
do we really not have a pylon here? We had no trouble getting 50 of them before. Oh! No, wait, it's beacons that need the um, energy thingies. Also, I forgot that I switched this off. Alright, there it is. Turn that off for now. And there's our efficiency modules. Beautiful. Now then, how fast is this? 16.6 plus 2. We're not getting close to filling up. Uh, 16.640 plus 2.08 times 2 is 20. Wait, that's not right. Brackets. 37. So if I more than double this, it's going to go over and belt. But I think we'll probably put this here. And then copy this down here. Just need to separate that by one tile, actually. Oh, beacon overload. I need to move this up a tile. And for symmetry's sake, we'll move this down here. And that's it. Okay. How much speed and how much efficiency? Wow, that is a lot of... How fast would this go? Uh, four 4.48 per second. If it was just contaminated scrap, ten of these would fill a belt nicely, but this alone is close to filling a belt. That's actually really good, unless the power consumption is just too much to consider. Yeah, it's a little over 40, so we get uh, four belts of output from here. That might be a bit much to deal with as well. How much input would we have? Only 18... oh, 71 material testing pack per second. What's, um... That's 90. But it's not like we can reserve a quarter of two belts for blank data cards. Um, I don't think we're going to go full speed. Anyway, this is 33 megawatts each. Um, is just over a gigawatt. That's like... Uh, Almost three of these things. Yeah, this would use about a gigawatt when it's going at full speed. It's not actually that big a deal at this point, is it? Maybe we should go full speed here. More speed means less UPS for the same amount of stuff. What about the inputs? If you did 3 per second for energy for reasons in the future, you should match that in all sciences, maybe. Uh, Mess, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Ragamuffin, good to see you again also. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And good to see you, Mess. Um, one thing... That I have to consider, though, if we're going to do this, 
it's going to be 143.36 scrap per second from each side of this block if it's going at full speed. That's a lot. Um, that's more than three belts. Just for the scrap. And it's only 17.8... Uh, 17... It's 18 called thermodynamic data per second. Um, we can handle that with just, like, one belt in... Uh, for the data cards quite easily. Let's do... Pick up... Here. I love that that's already just powered. I mean, we probably could do it this way. What's the only output fluid is, uh, 25 degree thermo fluid. Let's do pumps. Pick up. Uh, except it would be like more than six belts if both of these were going full speed for the contaminated scrap. So no, we're not going to do that. I think we'll just dial it back a bit with some efficiencies. Uh, if we used only efficiency here... It's down to the minimum consumption. How many speeds would it take to change that? That is still minimum consumption. Oh, I like where this is going. We we can have... Uh, it, I'm guessing more speed than we would get from a basic beacon. Does it say? Eight slots. Five, six, seven, eight. Okay, maybe not that much. Nope, we get that much. We fill this with speed modules, and we get as many speed modules from the beacon as we would with a basic beacon, and we're still on minimum consumption. 33 kilowatts. Uh, that is good. That is very good. We're still going. Hold on. No, I think I misread it. 6.6 .6 megawatts now. Uh, let's go with 8 of those. So this is the same as if we had a basic beacon. 3.9 megawatts. 2.1. Three hundred kilowatts and two hundred. I don't know that we really need to go this low in space where power is really abundant, but I'm curious. Two hundred. Okay, so two hundred's the minimum. Two hundred. Three hundred. That's kind of crazy. So how fast would this go? Just barely above minimum power consumption. Uh, 2.72 per second for each. Half a belt of contaminated scrap times four. Two belts of contaminated scrap. That is something we can deal with. Just build more solar farm? Oh, sure. We're doing that. In fact, we've automated it so that we can literally just sit back here and um, bark out orders for this 
robo network to build some more. The only trouble is we gotta we need to get them to build scaffolding first. And the more of it we queue up at once, the slower they are to actually place this. I should probably be doing just one block at a time. But yeah, I think I will make a habit of putting solar panels down when I put wide area beacons, since we're probably going to lay it out like this quite often. Uh, so... I might even just... Well, 2.7. I want 3. Can we do a little bit, little bit more speed? 1.2 megawatt. That is a lot more. That's four times as much. I think we found our sweet spot. Um, this would almost keep up with the 3 per second that we built the other things for. How many would it take? For three per second. Uh, nine, actually. So, I think what we might do... Is... We'll leave everything in place so that we could massively upgrade this in the same block later on if we want to. Also, that is very convenient. So, do this like so. It's actually super convenient. This goes here. So, it's going to go here. Perfect. Same thing on this side. And the obvious place to connect all of these is here. Cool. I think I'll just put these here for a visual aid for now. So I'll have a uh, material testing pack and blank data card. Nine of these will only consume three and twelve per second. Uh, what if we were to do 16? That is just under half a belt for the material testing pack. So I think... Well, I might want to bring this down a little bit. I think what we'll do is the shared uh, drop-off. On both sides we'll do the same thing. Because this will give us uh, two belts of output. 
which will be a good fit. If, if we ever go full size with this, it'll be a good fit, that is. So... I'm considering a balancer this time. We don't want a lane balancer though. We just trim the extra bits off of this. I don't know if I even have a regular one handy. An old fashioned uh, belt balancer. So if that goes there, that's a little too close. Can we do it? Is there a wide version of this? I don't think so, considering the way everything has to crisscross over the middle. Hmm. We could have it go to the side and then... I think I added some blueprints that might be helpful for this. Yeah, because we only need two belts. Uh, except for the lane balancer. That's actually going to be good. Okay. So, left 90 per second Bombulus. And... We're going to get rid of the lane balancer part. And then just... This one splits into two, this one splits into two. Actually, that goes there. sure how I can make this part look neat. That's not too bad, I suppose. This goes not there, actually. for the aesthetic. And that's almost perfect. Okay. Whoops. No, that's probably right, actually. to fill the whole thing out to see how it's gonna uh, fit together for when we might want to upgrade it 
we'll do our what temperature is it negative 100 thermal fluid over here Material testing pack and blank data card. Testing pack goes on this side of the belt. And blank data card goes on. Wait. And it goes on this side of the belt. Whoop. Accidental map click. And we also need to request fluid. So we do a request threshold. I'll leave this switched off for now, but I'm pretty sure this is gonna not change or anything. We need two train loads of material testing pack, stack size 10, uh, 3200, and blank data cards of 50. So, 8000 times 2. Clean the station. Uh, material testing pack. Hold on. Yeah, material testing pack and like data card requester. I'm aware that's slightly incorrect. We're missing the fluid. Just gonna copy it over there first. It was negative 100 degree fluid, I believe. Negative 100. Fantastic. Okay. So just to confirm again, 32 of these machines with these uh, beacon settings we're looking at two belts of contaminated scrap and a slow amount of cold thermodynamics data. So we'll just I think the input and output fluids are already connected except not all the way over here yet. Let's flash it. It's fine, actually. We will connect these like so. Oh, this does go here, actually. For some reason, I was thinking of the 25 degree. Or rather, the pipes in the middle. What's this? Even number six, two threes? If I move this over one tile, this thing would line up exactly. Except it wouldn't be long enough anyway. Also, uh, we do actually have room to do that. Would it look any better? This is one tile over. Probably. I 
Okay, this goes here. Fantastic. Uh, this is going to change a little bit. That's not going to look good no matter what, I think. There's no middle. Oh, yes, there is. And what about here? Yeah, I like that better. this build a lot so far actually. There's there for the moment. Uh, there's not going to be any pipes that need to go here, I think. We just have to get the uh, the 25 degree thermo fluid to its destination first. These are already connected up here. Let's just confirm something. Um, 32 of these machines is only going to output Oh, it loses some of the fluid. Ten becomes eight. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it's only a hundred-ish. Even less than that output. So, no problems with the pipes. I think we will connect these fluid pipes up here. That might be the neatest way to go about it. In fact, I'm pretty sure it is. And then... This goes here. Oh, wherever. Just putting this here for now so it illustrates where that needs to go. Okay, so we're going to get two full belts almost of contaminated scrap coming out of here, which means. It's going to look something like this. I don't think we'll have any issues there. Actually, I don't even need an underground here. That can just... If I had a way to make this jump over here... Which, I'm sure I could... That can just go over there. Cool. That seems to be facing the wrong way. Underground belt's going to be too short for this by one time. How about... That's the only way to do it symmetrically. I guess I can live with that. The 
frantically. Okay. So, contaminated scrap goes this way. Or, to put it another way... Well, since I'm going to be copying this over here, I think we will use the contaminated scrap. Why not let... Let is as belt? Uh, I don't know if I understand. So this one's going to be hold. Hold. Uh, and this one will be hot. Why not let it as belt? Oh, you mean just don't do the undergrounds here? Yeah, I guess that looks less bad. Maybe. It's fine. But yeah, I think that is basically it. Um, I'm pretty happy with that layout. Now we just do the same thing on the other side, but we don't need any fluid output. I'll bring this down here just to make it easier to see where that's going to fit. We might even be able to copy some of this. Oh, can we not flip this thing? Yeah. Um, okay, in that case, blueprint. And remove all of these. While I'm at it, I guess we can remove the output pipes. Although it might be a little bit more tedious to do it from here, actually. Alright, let's try this. Flip. This goes here. We need the same station over here. Including a fluid drop-off, except it'll be a different fluid. And this is all going to have to move over one. Probably just put that there. And the spiders maybe bring us some more... Oh, seems like we've finished everything. Wait, 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 we finished everything? I left all of these combinators switched on. Oh, I switched that one off. But yeah, we've basically caught up. Fantastic. I don't suppose we have... Oh, here we go. Some energy catalogs. Very nice. I haven't produced any more science yet, so this is relatively recent. Yeah, let's uh, remove these. And it was literally just, I think it was nine of these that we're going to have temporarily. That's to keep up with three per second, in theory. I guess it wouldn't hurt to have more. 
a lot neater this way. Okay, we don't need any output fluid on the hot side. This one doesn't quite line up the same. Wait a sec, this doesn't line up the same here either. So bonus points, we made that a bit neater, although I think I remember I was doing that deliberately. Bonus bonus points, this drains from the middle, so it'll be a lot more even. and consistent with the flow. Hopefully the spiders have some thermodynamic facilities for us. Uh, they should do. Oh, we have 50. Nice. Should probably bump up some of these requests again. just leave it like that for now. Spiders are arriving. White beacons sure make for uh, sure make for some clean builds. Although so do giant um, thermodynamics facilities and almost perfectly symmetrical hot and cold data card um, recipes. Alright, so this goes here, this goes here. Not that it really matters, I guess. And like so. Just to confirm again, Uh, the recipes for hot and cold are pretty much exactly the same, except for the fluids. They, they're literally the same, except for the fluids. Oh. We already set this up correctly, I think. To set the requests for this, and it's plasma stream is the only difference. Plasma stream twenty thousand. Don't forget to connect this to here. Spiders, I can't see what I'm doing. I think that's all connected properly. Looking good. Uh, don't really need that belt going all the way down until we're ready to expand. Let's just double check these all line up correctly. Looks good. I had a friend over this week and I just noticed he toasted an uneven number of bread slices. What kind of monster does that? How big is this toaster? Does it do more than two at a time? Uh, we need some speed modules in here. And... Nine of these would be three per second. Cool. Just two? So they went to the trouble to, to toast like two, or then maybe four 
and then one more. Is what you're telling me. Wait a sec. Why does the beacon not fit here? Oh, it does. I was just... Oh, because that's like... Like this. Yeah, okay. I kind of want to fill this space arbitrarily, just so I know that this is not where the beacon goes or anything. But I can't think what we would actually put there. Okay. So. Um, I think we need to... Put these here just so we know where they fit. Again. And it's more with feeling. Oh, that's gonna be different. Uh, hmm. No, wait. This has to go somewhere by itself. And this one is lower, actually. So it's gonna be like. No, this one's going to be different from both of these. Let's start with our conclusion. Just so we can see everything a bit more clearly first. Um, I think fast inserters are good enough for 90 per second. I'm pretty sure. And this goes here. I hate the way that looks, but what can you do? Look at this nice, neat, straight wire that you can barely see. And then down here, it's all over the place. I don't suppose I could connect it to this one, and then... Not even. Yes, that's less... No, I hate it. Let's just do this for consistency's sake. We're going to need a precise loader for this. On this side, we're just doing... Uh, contaminated scrap. Oh, wait. Station name. Uh, this should be a priority pickup, because... If this stuff fills up, we can't produce what we actually want. Uh, LTN, active provider. And I think that's already done, actually. Station name is... Contaminated Scrap and... 25 degree thermofluid. Active provider. Just a bunch of regular stack inserters will be fine. Okay, so we need, I think maybe I'll do it this way this time. That doesn't line up the same, but I hate it. Let's do that. Uh... I'm going to need two splitters to merge this properly, aren't I? On the other hand, uh, all of this... 8, 16, 32... Uh, let's rate calc one of these. Wait a sec, that doesn't look right. Eight, sixteen, thirty-two, thirty-two. 16, 32. 32, there we go. 87, 
Oh, it's two... Oh, how did I forget this? It's two belts of contaminated scrap per side. Uh, once we max this thing out. Okay, then. Uh, in that case... I think we actually... Do this? Perhaps? That's not quite right. So the contaminated, uh, the desired output goes here. Contaminated scrap goes here. And as for these two belts, um, they are going this way. So I'll put my solar panels down. Okay. And we're bringing all this together because we could merge and split them. Um, let's do a corner. Hmm. I wonder if I could come up with a better one of these if it is uh, doing a 180. So what we've got here is a lane balancer. Uh, it is a 4 to 4 belt balancer plus half of the belts give items the opportunity to swap sides if it's backed up. Um, I moved that one around until I came up with this, which is the same thing, but a 90 degree corner in as compact a space as I can manage. And I'm hoping it's possible to do like a 180 degree in a relatively small space. Remains to be seen. So the first thing is this would be here. Hmm. If that goes there. And This one goes here. Uh, the middle stuff. Well, this one's no longer. I'm already confused. Yeah, I don't. I don't know how long it would take me to figure that out. Let's just use something we've already got. It might look a little awkward the way... Yeah, this isn't the worst already. I can live with that. Alright, so that Goes there, goes there, goes there. Actually, like this. I'm absolutely loving not having to add substations and think about where they go or anything. Two hours later, indeed, Majagas. Uh, designing belt things like that is not my forte either. I'm actually pretty proud of just the uh, lane balances I've made and how I turned that into a little corner. 
So are you at the base, Fiasha Slave? Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Majagas also. Uh, how are we doing? We've got an automatic system for expanding solar power. The only nuisance here is we have to wait until the bots drop all of this uh, scaffolding, which takes a while, before we can actually lay out the uh, solar panels. But we're expanding that all remotely. We're getting close to 20 gigawatts. Very nice. We've got tier 2 uh, energy sides in the rail network. Downsides, we've got copper troubles. We've still got a lot of copper troubles, actually. Uh, ever since we started churning out... Well, not, not when we started, exactly, but... At some point, when we're churning out blank data cards and ion stream, uh, it got to the point where, even though we've still got a lot of... Even though we've got no copper plate in storage anymore, we're actually full on copper, uh, copper ore which is kind of encouraging, so we really, really need to double down on making more smelters. Speaking of making more things... Um, our wall has finished self-building, so we can finally deconstruct this. Let's get our deconstruction gang, which I fucked over here and completely forgot about. Um, they're actually... Oh, the trunk, right. Let's get them to bring that stuff back here. And I might just get the construction spiders... Uh... Oh, hello. Military gang is here as well. I might just get the construction spiders to deconstruct some of this. Not sure exactly how much extra storage space they have, but we'll see. Mine older copper. We are doing that. The actual bottleneck is um, smelting at this point. I'm almost thinking that instead of sending copper back to Nalvis from the scrap processing up here, we should just smelt it. But then we're losing the productivity bonus. But we've got like we've got like infinite copper ore but not enough plate. We really just need to smelt as fast as possible. But I feel like if I were to do a bunch of that up here, I would later regret uh, not having the productivity bonus. Okay, spiders, do your thing. Tear down that wall? Yes. Why do we deconstruct the wall? Your smelters probably don't prioritize any particular ore by demand. Uh, yes and no. Mostly no. Um, I was talking about that earlier, actually. For a while, I've wanted to add something to them whereby they'll respond to central planning. Um, whereby... It, it, it's more of a strong suggestion, really. Uh, if we have no copper plate, for example, and literally a million steel, um, assuming the local condition in the block allows for it, uh, 
I would like to be prioritizing copper plate over steel here. Um, obviously, if there's no copper ore in this block, that's not going to apply. Or... I can't think of another good example at the moment. Uh, something I was talking about earlier was often we would need iron plate, so we'd make more of these smelting blocks, but uh, they would put all of their iron plate into steel, because we've just got a target for steel, a target for iron plate, a target for everything else. And it has no awareness of a wider context. Um... I'm not exactly sure how I would make it so that from outside it's saying try to smelt copper plate first. Um, actually, I do know one way. It just involves more combinators than I would like to use. Yeah, we could do it. This would be some. Th this would be one of those projects I would probably spend quite a few hours on, just tweaking and stuff. Also, I've been thinking about making uh, another block to do omni smelting that uses bots. I'm curious to see how quickly fifty logistic bots could keep up because. Uh, apparently if we can stick to 50 logistic bots per block, uh, per logistic network, there won't be any bot wind. Uh, anyway, let's not get too distracted just yet. Uh, first things first, I would like to... make some omni smelters here right about can I ever find the right spot for it there we go right about there for starters let's bring the spiders to the middle they should be able to reach almost everything Yeah, it's something I've... I, I haven't, like, sat down to try to figure it out, but uh, something I would definitely like to do and have wanted to do for a while with the Omni Smelters is to have a global priority system. Okay. Uh, let's bring... Our hot Where's this gonna fit? Let's do the circuitry first. Uh, first we remove the unwanted signals from the logistic train stop output. We subtract what's already in the train from the total that we're trying to put into the train it's really hard to see I don't like that well it's not going to get much better then we have two arithmetic oops and one decider. And then our stack filter inserters. Oh, I just used the physical wires. Whoops. I should probably stop carrying them, honestly. I've got it down to muscle memory to switch to the nav set to get cheat wires. I should stop having these take up space in my inventory. Set filters, whitelist, set stack size, S, 
And I'm gonna bring that all the way across. Red wire touches everything. Green wire touches one inserter per cargo wagon. That looks right. Connect and connect. On the green wire. Uh, it's only when there's less than 24 items to drop off. No stack size means it's going to be set to 1. We're going to pass through the desired filter. For the rest of them, we get the average of what needs to be put into the train. Uh, total divided by number of chests. And we output that as S for stack size as well as pass through. It, the number here doesn't matter. Again, it's just a signal to set the filter. And on this green wire right here, we just have the total of how many items we're still trying to put into the train. One up, one up. What's one up? That's all good. And the reason we're not... Oh, I need to connect those. Um, the reason that we're not using generic each to get the averages here um, for the balanced loaders is because these wires are connected and it's going to confuse them. I meant to move those two combinators up to make them more easily visible. Maybe. I think it's more just... Maybe if we swap these around. I think that is a bit better. I don't love this, but it's an improvement. Could bring that down here now, actually. Okay. And this is cold thermodynamic data and hot thermodynamics data. Fantastic. What are we missing over this way? What's happening on Nalvis? Uh, we pretty much finished the furnace already. Fantastic. Let's try to find our white spider. Finish off the rest of the rail block. So the trains can get in and out. Also, let's put another one of these over here. We definitely won't be able to finish building it in one trip because I've only got one of the spiders carrying a single stack of crafting combinators. But we can lay out most of it, I think. Fantastic. Do the ghosts get copied as well? I don't remember. When you copy-paste? Yes? Which ghosts do you mean? 
like tile ghosts or something else. Oops, where am I going? I think this build might actually be done. It's probably like a couple of little connections that we haven't done yet. And hot. There were a couple of items missing in the left smelter. Uh, left smelter. Do you mean... What, what kind of items? Or are we looking somewhere else? Oh, they're not setting the recipe for this one? Uh, yep, there's some... Uh, there's some... That's right, I forgot. Crafting Combinator has some weird quirks when it comes to... copy-pasting and stuff. For some reason. Let's try copying this again. We've definitely got these crafting combinators. All of the recipes are set to glass. Uh, this goes here. And I do see the ghosts this time. Good catch, thank you. Uh, let's copy it here as well. And we still need to wait a little while before the spiders get back. Okay, should we turn this thing on? I'm thinking there's going to be a somewhat disastrous shortage of certain resources, but we may as well see what's going on. Also, I missed a corner. And I also missed this entire thing. Okay. And since we're doing a precise loader, let's Make sure there's extra items. This one's already switched on. Uh, are no trains coming? There should at least be trains picking up the material testing packs. There we go. No shortage of those. Now that I look at it, maybe it would have been better to have two train stops for output here. It's fine. It takes like a second to load these because of the stack size of 10. It's almost as fast as fluid. And the fact that all of these inserters are sticking out afterwards just makes it even faster. Blank data cards on the other hand are uh, going to be a problem. This one's a bit short for delivery. This one is considerably short for a delivery. So I think it's going to be a little while before we um, see this one in action. Unfortunately. And this was the first build with uh, wide area beacons and pylons too. I'm absolutely loving how neat it is. I mean, look at that. Did I put these pumps around the wrong way? Again? You better believe it. And I'm pretty sure I manually built these out as well. Whoops. Ew. 
here comes our cold thermal fluid. Fantastic. That's what I want to see. Alright, so how's our... I was going to say how's our copper situation. That's why we're making all of these furnaces. At the rate we're going, we're going to need so many of them. The UPS is going to go back down to free upgrade levels. Does the card recycling work, or the base just this starved? Uh, it does work, but I think we've got... Where's a good example? Um, over here? We've got a bunch of blank data cards here, but it's not enough. It's not quite enough to trigger a train to pick it up. Because when it comes to full train, when it comes to long trains, I like them to be full or nothing. Um, so we're just not quite going fast enough with a lot of this stuff for it to be more reliable fluid, if you like. But mostly the problem right now is we don't have enough smelters. Uh, and we've got a sudden explosive need for more smelters. We also have a sudden explosive need for more belts, although I thought I had those delivered over here. I see 2,000 uh, splitters, but maybe not blue belts, like regular blue belts. There's 4.6k here. Maybe this train stop is just too busy all the time. Oh, this one's delivering belt. There you go. Hmm. Maybe I should... I didn't know how to do it when I designed this particular mall block. But maybe I should have a pickup station for long trains for anything that we've got like 200 stacks of. Except then we have to make sure to reduce that much uh, belt. Just need purple chests here. And limiters on the inserters. In any case, it's going to be a bit quicker. And it's also going to be better for... The amount of belt that needs to be sent over here. Uh, if we just send those spiders over for the moment. I think I will... Double... Okay, these two are already crazy. Actually, 16,000 belt is a lot. That kind of implies... Okay, how much belt goes into this? 1.7k. So, I th think this mall has so many trains waiting their turn to pick up from here, that it actually couldn't get rid of the belt that it was able to produce fast enough. That's a little bit of a problem. Alright, well, that just about does it for today, I think. Let's uh, see who's streaming Factorio. I am more than a little sad that I don't get to see this block working just yet. But it's going to be a little while if I hold out for that. Who have we got today? In... 
and div. Uh, oh, it's German. The top three are all other languages. Familiar faces, apparently not. All right, let's pick one more or less at random. I'm not seeing anyone doing space exploration or anything. Or any, like, mega bases or anything like that. Okay, how about this one? We're going in blind. Thank you all for watching. Do take care, and I'll see you next time. Check out the Discord of the Blueprints. If you have any uh, questions or anything, by all means, let me know. Uh, and if I haven't put that rail block up on the webs, uh, the Blueprint website and the Discord, uh, pretty soon, give me a reminder for that, I guess. All right, let's drop in on. Riano, I guess. Take care, guys. Have a good one. That's going to change a lot. Holy crap, 78? Hello. Thank you for the raid.